Today, the atmosphere in Austin rivals the Hollywood blockbuster premiere as some of the brightest stars of the Big 12 collide. B.J. Simmons with 44 touchdowns, over 4,700 yards. He's the number one offensive weapon in the nation. Cedric Benson, bruising Longhorn running back, who's dangerous out of the backfield. Wes Welker on punt returns or in the end zone. He is double trouble. Roy Williams, big, tough, fast, and always a deep threat for the Horns. Vince Young, scrambling Texas quarterback with explosive power. The nation's top scoring offense meets the sixth ranked team in the country. Texas Tech battles Texas next on Fox Sports Net. It is going to be an emotional one tonight in the state capitol. In fact, there might not be a dry eye in the Lone Star State. As from the campus of the University of Texas in Austin, KSR presents College Football Saturday. Get pumped up. You can hear it in the background. The Texas Tech Red Raiders taking on the number six team in the nation, the Texas Longhorns. Well, the battle right now in the Big 12 South, it's for second place. Oklahoma solidifying their position on top of the 41-3 win over Bama earlier today. So the battle for number two in the South between Texas and Texas Tech. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers alongside Dave Lapman. Welcome once again to Austin. Well, Dave, a real contrast in styles and experience when you look at the quarterback position. And for the Longhorns, Vince Young is only making his fifth career start. A real good guy on the perimeter, though. Oh, he's something else. He's a superior athlete. And superior athletes make their sport look easy. This guy is incredible. He's just graceful. He's so fluid. He can create plays. I tell you, when he gets out in the open field, he is unbelievably special. And he's got weapons that he can just distribute the football to. He's big time. The Red Raiders, B.J. Simmons, you can barely hear yourself. you got to like it tonight in Austin. Well, he's got an opportunity to surpass the totals of Ty Detmer for a single-season NCAA mark tonight. Well, B.J. Simmons continues to assault Texas Tech record books as well as NCAA record books. And these touchdowns are an example of it. This isn't for his career. This is for this season. What makes him so great is his confidence. His teammates respond to that confidence. And he gets them all involved. He's completed a pass to 15 different receivers, eight touchdown, or eight touchdown passes, I should say, to eight different receivers. He's special. I had the trainers from Texas send up some extra towels. This guy gets real emotional on senior night. What a strong player he has been and a strong character guy. As we are ready to go, Texas Tech Red Raiders won the toss. So Rick McGee, McGee is going to kick it away. Vincent Meeks over to the far side. Johnny Mack, the junior from Lakeland, Florida, over to the near side. And we are underway. What a night in Austin. McGee pumped up, I guess. It'll be first and ten for the Red Raiders at their own 20-yard line. It is a thick night out, a lot of humidity. Very warm night. We had some rain just a few minutes ago. Will it slow down B.J. Simmons? And will it make it a slippery ball for the guy who's trying to set a record tonight? 448 yards. As we look at our Kiyosera starting 11. And B.J. Simmons has overtaken Ty Detmer as the all-time single-season passing yardage leader in NCAA history. Simmons out of Cypress Creek High School in Houston at 6-1. 220 pounds. And he doesn't use many receivers, does he? No, he sure doesn't. <laughs> Just 15. Everybody at the line of scrimmage. Middle screen. Nothing doing. Glover belted right away. Maybe three. Out to the 23. Guys protecting Simmons. Whitley Loper on the outside. Campbell Ramirez are the guards. Toby Cecil, the man in the middle, calling out the blocking assignments. Henderson, then the you only have one running back, and then all the receivers. Welker, Glover, Francis. They call Mickey Peters a tight end, but you don't see too many tight ends that are only 215 pounds. He runs like a wide receiver. He sure does. So now it's going to be second and seven from the 23. Texas Tech coming into the contest. Seven and three, trying to enhance their bowl possibilities. Tough on the outside, and a completion for a first down. 
taken in by guess who? Wes Welker, a senior from Oklahoma City, trying to track him. You need a spy on that guy. Defensively, it is going to be a difficult proposition, and this is a top 20 defensive unit. Crowder, Roderick Wright, Marcus Tubbs underneath with Kalen Thornton on the outside, Boyd and Derek Johnson, outside backers, Aaron Harris in the middle, and Griffin and Basher are the cornerbacks. Plenty of experience in the secondary. Giger and Huff are the safeties. So first and 10 at the 32. And Dave, let's not forget this, this defensive unit is number five in the nation at defending against the pass as they get an offside call on the quick one and complete for close to another first down to Nehemiah Glover. He's about a yard shy. It was a free snap. Yeah, Crowder jumped, a true freshman at right defensive end. Can't be listening to Simmons. He's going to move when the football moves. And Simmons used a little hard count, little voice inflection to draw him offside. They will take. And yeah, they're looking over to the sideline. Take the snap. Offside on the defense. Penalties decline. Second down. Yeah, second and one. Take that all day, every day. And one of the keys coming in for Simmons is the real quick rhythm offense before Texas can even get close. No doubt. And, and you know, playing in the shotgun is an advantage for him tonight because he's suffering uh, with a little left knee problem that is going to limit that mobility. Show the blitz. Give it off to Henderson. And Henderson's got a first down as he's cracked going across the 45 out to the 48-yard line. Henderson, a sophomore from Gatesville, Texas. He's got a great average on the ground. He's also got 62 catches, can do it all. Jim Knox. Okay, you guys talking about B.J. Simmons' left knee. Talked to him just moments before he took the field. He said he's ready, but keep in mind, took a real good shot to that knee last week against Baylor. Had to leave. He's lacking mobility tonight. We'll see if he can last. Look at that big brace, Knoxie, on that left knee. That's a testament to it's not 100%. He, but Welker again. Can't make a miss in the secondary, though. Great back goal by Smith. So Wes Welker already with two grabs. He's got about five yards on first down, our best by leaders. All-time passing for a single season. Just mentioned it, Dave. 488 needed coming in tonight for B.J. Simmons. And with the kind of start he's got, it could be a record-setting night. Yeah, it could be. I mean, he is he's done it all season long. He understands every nuance of this offense, and he's seen just about every gimmick defense you can see. He understands how defenses are trying to attack him and take away what he's trying to accomplish offensively. Boy, look at that pre-snap read when you look at the eyes of Simmons. The way he gets up there, and they give it off on a quick one to Welker on the outside. First down, Wes Welker all the way to the 30-yard line. That is what you call an offense in complete rhythm to hit a guy in motion that perfectly. Yep, it's that it's that quick uh, quick reverse, and it's a it's a heck of a heck of a job. It's the, the handoff. The timing has to be just exemplary, and it was. I mean, if Welker mistimes that by just a beat, it's a broken play. B.J. Simmons is carrying the football instead of Welker. You don't want that. The timing was right on the money on that one, though. So often we're talking way too much too early about Griffin and the other members of the secondary making stops. First and ten at the 30 of Texas. Little dump off Henderson. Will they have blocking? It's not there, and he barely gets back to the line. Well, he wanted to screen, but there was really no pressure on Simmons as we look at the keys for the Red Raiders coming in. Well, the first thing, uh, the first key is exactly what you described, Joel. No pressure on, on B.J. Simmons. They have to block for B.J., limit the hits on him. You know, he's had a stinger in the right shoulder, and he's got that injured left knee all in the last month. Explosive plays. They've got 93 plays and 20 yards or more, and they're minus eight in the turnover department. they got to take it away and protect the football tonight because Texas is plus six. Scoville's in the slot of the wide side. And Simmons is changing the play. Second and 10 from the 30 after starting to their own 20. Here comes the heat. There goes Simmons. A loss of just about 10. Tubbs all over the quarterback. Well, this kid's going to be a first-round draft pick in, in next April's NFL draft. One heck of an athlete, a former tight end in high school. And this is where the pressure has to come for Texas. Right up the middle, right in the face of B.J. Simmons. And... Tubbs gets clean, beats his man inside, gets his fifth quarterback sack of the season. Got Did a good job of getting inside of Cody Campbell. Yeah, got past the guard. This is a guy that you mentioned. He didn't play football until his junior year in high school. He's more interested in basketball. So the sack back to the 39, and now it's third and 19. Simmons with two to each side. Will he use the wide side of the field? He will, but Glover won't get there. He's dropped down at the 30-yard line. And will they go for the long field goal try? 
It's now fourth and ten. Here the Red Raiders can gamble early. You never know with Mike Leach. That's why I bring it up. Well, they brought Michael Griffin off the slot to pressure Simmons. They're going to try to give him as many different looks as they possibly can. And you know, Leach has seen it all, and, and so has Simmons. You'll see him appear here. He's on a screen right now. Here comes Griffin right there. Safety blitz off the slot. Pressure Simmons into throwing the ball just a little sooner than he wanted to. No shock here. Instead of a 47-yard field goal try, Mike Leach is going for it. This is his mindset, fourth and ten. Simmons' pocket holds up. The crossing pattern for a first down. Mickey Peters, the senior for Weatherford, Texas, hit in stride all the way down near the 15-yard line. Uh, he hit, Michael Huff was in coverage. He hit Peters, and B.J. Simmons needed 45 yards of offense to set a single-season total offense record for Texas Tech. He's already got it on the first drive tonight on this pass to Peters gives him the new single season total offense market as you mentioned Joel that's a diminutive in terms of size tight end 215 pound tight end that's another wide out running that crossing pattern and Simmons in him on the money an amazing season Simmons paid his dues waited for Kingsbury to lead now it's Henderson bouncing inside the 15 flag from the secondary as they drop at the 10 yard line the flag where you normally see a defensive holding call. I think you got it. I think they're going to call Terrell Brown for defensive holding. Or will it be a shot to the face? It looks like Texas Tech, they, their reaction was it was going to be against them. Let's see. The illegal shot? No. Illegal substitution. 12 men on the field. Illegal participation. John Bible, our official veteran of Big 12 football. And now the options belonging to the Red Raiders. You got to believe they're going to take the penalty. Texas just ran two off the football field and ran one on. So they had one too many. Now going over the options, you're right, Joel. Is it, it's going to be half the distance to the goal or take the play. Yeah, the officials talking it over. It was during the play. It was not a dead ball foul. So it should be first down over. And the mark off. Mac Brown. You, know, you see that slide. Illegal participation on the defense. 12 men on the field. That penalty is declined. Face mask on the defense. That penalty is assessed. Five yards from the end of the run. Repeat first down. You got it. It wasn't wow. a dead ball foul. So double jeopardy on Texas. You saw the the sweat and the frustration on Mac Brown. It is a warm, muggy night in Austin, Texas. I mean, you can cut it. That's how thick the area is here tonight. It is. It's definitely close. And he doesn't like the fact that Texas Tech on this first drive of the football game has gone through his defense like hot knife through butter. And all of a sudden, they've held the ball for better than five minutes. That's a rarity, too. Welker in motion. Henderson jogging up the middle. Too easy. Touchdown, Texas Tech. What an 80-yard drive to start the night for the Red Raiders. Boy, he would have scored and touched football there. Nobody laid a fingernail on him. And the key call, Mike Leach deciding to go for it on fourth down, continuing the drive. The offensive line doing a good job of area blocking. Well, look at the seal right here. Get up on the linebacker level here. Easy cutback lane. Not touched by a soul. That's excellent blocking up front by that underrated Texas Tech offensive line who's played very, very well all season long too good as in the place kicker although it was too good to start for Texas Tech with the extra point it's blocked another block for the Longhorns this year they get everybody involved in fact Roy Williams has had a block this year of a punt yeah that was the ninth block kick of the season three field goals three punts now three extra points three of each boy this was well blocked up front easy touchdown Great names in Texas football history here. Earl Campbell. Boy, it pains me to see you Earl. You said that. Man, that pains me. All the pounding he took as a horn and a Houston Oiler. Fred Aker shaking his hand. There's Daryl Royal right in front of him. Yeah. Where Earl was just so, so gifted. Man, the most, the best combination of speed and power I think I've ever seen in a running back. When he played for the Houston Oilers, 
in that Astrodome. Oh, man, it was just, it was death going in there. Very, very tough to win. Brown going back deep, along with Selvin Young. So now the Longhorns are going to touch it for the first time tonight. The kick from Too Good. Band is coming over to the near side. It's going to be Selvin Young at the one. A lane to run. Outside he goes to the 30 and pulled down from behind. Beyond the 35. Near the 37-yard line. Now the key is there starting 11 for the Longhorns. Well, Vince Young in his fifth career start. What he does on the ground is the key, though. That's why he is so dangerous like Brad Smith is for Missouri. So Vince Young better every snap. The freshman out of the Houston area, Madison High School, Texas 5A Player of the Year a couple of years ago. On first down. Benson tripped up early, lunges for maybe two and a half, close to three. The offensive line. It's going to be Scott Holloway, Glenn Allen, and Blaylock up front. Allen can help out at center as well. In the backfield, Benson Matthews. He had three touchdowns last week on the ground. Benson coming off his best day of the year, 180 yards. B.J. Johnson, Roy Williams at the tight end. David Thomas. Vince Young out of the shotgun on second and seven. Quarterback draw. Nifty moves. Close to a first down. He's a tall guy out to the 44, almost 45 yard line. Tall in the pocket like Randall Cunningham. Defensively, a challenge group. McGinnis threat Scott Duckett. I'll tell you why as Duckett leads the way on the end. Nine and a half sacks. Smith, Stratton, and Saldi are the linebackers. And in the secondary, Johnson and Smith, inexperienced back there. But Acock does lead the team not only in tackles, but he's got six picks as well. So keep their down early. Momentum belonging to Texas Tech. Great field position for the Longhorns. Now can they take advantage of it? Benson and Allen split behind Young. And Young throwing an easy one. Roy Williams makes a miss. Big yardage. And there you see the moisture in the turf. It, it was a light shower. About 30, 40 minutes before game time, and that created that loss of footing. Well, you got a freshman, Chad Johnson, trying to cover Roy Williams. You have a size mismatch, you have an experience, an experience mismatch, and uh, really the, the, the turf, the slippery turf, gets the unassisted tackle. It really, uh, what a threat this guy is. Joel, last week, six catches, 162 yards, including a 67 yard touchdown. You put him in, in single coverage. It's cock and nails. And you put him in Mike Leach's offense with B.J. Simmons at quarterback. Yeah. It's scary. Look at the, look at the cushion. Oh. First and ten. Moving up front. Three oh. down for Young. It's outside Texas Tech. On the comeback. Easy one. Look out. Down to the 15. It's a first down for B.J. Johnson. Good idea on a three down. It's going to be first and goal. And talking about the creativity of Vince Young because of that rare athletic ability. Offside, untapped, Italy's replay like you mentioned. Now he gets out of pocket. For an outside linebacker or cornerback, do you chase him? Do you stay in coverage? He gets you between the rock and the hard place. Wide open because it gets him in the sweat. What do I do? I mean, do I, do I get after Vince Young because he can run it? Do I stay in coverage? Out of pocket, he is such a danger. The only quarterback in Texas history to rush for over 800, throw for over 800, and he's just beginning. Outside of the nine first and goal, and another option. Sloan Thomas was available downfield. Now Benson belted, gain of a yard, and that was it. At the eight, Cedric Benson has really picked it up over the last four weeks in particular. Scott in on the hit. And our Longhorn keys of the game, Dave. Well, they want to play keep away, Joel. First of all, they want to melt that play clock every snap, go on 10 to 12 play drives, 38 to 40 minutes time of possession, and then finish drives. Red zone touchdowns. Here they are in the red zone. They want touchdown, not field goal. They don't want to punt tonight. And then win the kicking game, dictate the field position, make tech on the long fields, get themselves some short fields. That's their MO tonight. Longhorns looking to take the lead. Second and goal. Benson spun around and put down. Big time play defensively for the Red Raiders. Brock Stratton, the middle linebacker over there, along with McGinnis. Nathan McGinnis, the left end out of Waco. A senior. 
So not much going right now for the ground game. Cedric Benson over the last three weeks has been arguably the hottest running back in college football. You know, he's run for 494 yards, averaging 5-7 a pop, seven touchdowns. Let's see why they want to get him the football, but now you're going to have to throw it a little bit, spread him out and throw it. He's coming off back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons, first in Longhorn history to do it as both a freshman and a sophomore, very close to doing it once again. Now on third and goal, underneath. Breaking the tackle, touchdown, Longhorns, Bo Skate. I think it was Acock that missed the tackle. He was there to make the play, and that's their best player defensively, their leading tackler. And Bo Scaife has had an injury-riddled career at Texas, coming out of the Denver, Colorado area, high school phenom. And, and here, yards after catch. Catch, miss. Acock misses the tackle at the eight-yard line. Oh, did he cross Ooh, the plane? Very did the close. ball cross the plane of the goal line? Covered but it's anyway recovered in the end BJ. zone by B.J. Johnson anyway. Dusty Mangum trying to give the Longhorns the lead. And it's Texas 7. Texas Tech 6 on senior night in Austin. It's an early touchdown toss for Vince Young. The offense recovers. Now let's see if the defense for Texas has made some adjustments. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage on Fox College Sports. Now, fantasy football players, there's a show with 30 minutes of who to start, who to sit, who's the player you need to pick up. Our experts doing the work for you. It's the ultimate fantasy football show tonight, right after college football tomorrow morning as well, only on Fox Sports Net. Check it all out and also look at your local listings for the start times in your area. Fantasy football personified. Joel Myers, Dave Lapp, Jim Knox back in muggy Austin, Texas. And we do have a slight delay downstairs as they put the ball to the 20 yard line. Texas Tech, Dave, already has 130 yards of total offense. We aren't even a quarter into the football game, and this is against the 16th best defense in the nation, fifth best against the pass. Well, it, it's not surprising because they're averaging 508 yards a game passing, 613 yards of total offense, and converting 53% on third down. Third down's no different than first and second down for Texas Tech, though. They run the same stuff. I mean, so it's no You're big right. deal to be converting better than half the time. Well, here we go with the Longhorns' second offensive series. Didn't take them long to move it the first time. They've got it first and 10. First drive was 63 yards. Option. Cedric Benson. Whoa, oh, your head, big boy. Go for the first down. He's got it. All right, Mike. The ultimate game as far as I'm concerned. Oklahoma and USC. That, that would be a heck of You know, if things fall right for Texas, if, if Michigan can beat Ohio State next week up in Michigan, and USC has a problem with Oregon State. Who knows? Vince Young on the play fake. Not a bad throw. Roy oh, Williams wow. won't quit on it, will he? Wow. Okay, like take it there. on. Give me some face time. It's senior night. Why not? Look at him. He's in his last home game. <laughs> what a smile on his face as he's got another first down. Great kid. And that's something that his head coach, Mac Brown, talked to him about. What a great job his mom did and the way he's been a, just a stability guy in the program. This is size, speed, strength personified. 6'4", 210 pounds. Two guys, three guys, four guys getting involved. He is El Lodo. Yeah. And if the guy runs, he'll run like in the high four threes with all that size and a size 16 shoe to boot. That's a tough ca character there. See Roy on Sundays. Yeah. yeah. Some oh, Mondays. Yeah. And now the design roll for Vince Young. He's got the first down. And Thomas, or Mega Johnson rather, makes the most of it for another first down. Can they stop anybody? This Texas Tech Red Raider defense until two games ago, dead last out of 117 teams in the nation. Well, they've improved a little bit, but they did face Baylor over the last two weeks, so they're now 111 out of 117. Exactly. The last two weeks, five takeaways. They held Colorado and Baylor both under 300 yards of offense. And this uh, Texas offense, so a horse of a different color, Joel. They're one of only four schools, uh, five schools in the country. To throw it and run it for over 200 yards apiece. Timeout is taken by Texas Tech, and I don't blame them. Everything way too easy right now. For Vince Young and the Longhorns. Young has not missed yet. He is 5 of 5, 76 yards with a touchdown toss to his tight end, Bo Scaife. 
And that's the thing. Last week he threw the ball very, very well against Oklahoma State, and he's thrown it well again tonight. This guy gets his act together throwing the football with his ability to run and create. He's averaging 8.7 yards per rush. He's rushed for 10 touchdowns. He becomes a threat throwing the football. Sky is the limit. Now, Cedric Benson, as you said, maybe the hottest running back in the nation over the last three to four games. This young man still, fortunately for the Longhorns, he's not celebrating senior night. He's back next year. And a lot of his yards, as always, after contact, 54% of his career yards after contact. There he is the last three games, seven touchdowns, averaging 5-7 a carry. Those, that 494 yards, second most in college football. And I'll, and I'll tell you, he is a, a huge factor. It's, it's he's the power guy. You know, Vince Young softens him up on the perimeter and inside with the speed. And then in comes Benson. He's the hammer driving the nail. So now they, after the timeout, was taken by Texas Tech. It's a first down for the Longhorns. Bottom of the Red Raiders, 47. Will Allen. And right out of the timeout, you think this kid's got confidence? He's changing the play at the line. Toss sweep, long side of the field for Benson. Looking for Lane, he'll take it to the outside. There's the speed and the power. There he goes. Oh. And he takes himself down, trying to cut it back. Only one man to beat. He's down to the 14-yard line. On cue. Well, I'll tell you, the guy that had the key block was Tony Jeffrey, the wide receiver. And Roy Williams has talked about it. With, with Texas making a commitment to running the football, the wide receivers have stepped up and are blocking people. And, and here it is, on the edge. You see him right there on the top of the screen, Tony Jeffrey making the block on the perimeter that gets Cedric Benson the edge. And now he's off to the races, except trips over his own feet and into the turf. And Cedric Benson's probably very upset about it because he saw a golden goal post, but his feet crumbled. Boy, you talk about thunder fouls. So he got some power. Oh, yeah. Lower half of his body. Try it again. And he won't get there. This time, snuffed out right at the point of attack. Adel Duckett, who yep. leads the team with nine and a half sacks, 17 tackles behind the line for a loss. Mineral Wells, Texas. He is only a junior, and that was quite a stop. We had uh, Texas Tech earlier this season against Colorado. He had a couple of sacks and, and, and penetrated, disrupted all night long, just like that. Get up the football field. And when your back has to make his first cut three yards in his own backfield, you got problems. Hard to believe. That flew by. Usually it's over under is about four and a half hours <laughs> in the Mike Leach game. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's the end of the first 15 minutes of play. And how entertaining was that? Marching up and down the field. Longhorns and the Red Raiders matching each other offensively. Longhorns driving. They've got a one-point lead at the end of the first quarter. You're watching College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Presented by Kia Sarah. Oh, thank you, Joel. You are such the man. Hey. How muggy is it tonight? Uh, it, it, the humans are out. The humans are hanging from the trees. I can see them out there. And, and second opportunity in the red zone for the Longhorns. They scored a touchdown the first opportunity because Bo Scaife made Acock miss. And he scored a, a touchdown on his touchdown pass. And who would have thunk the Tech would have outrushed Texas in the first quarter like they did by two yards? Hard to believe on that prop play. Back to throw. Vince Young in trouble on his way down. So the first five snaps of this drive were all first downs. Then Duckett got the big hit on Benson. And now the sack in the backfield as Dawson was on top of the situation. The true freshman from Shreveport, Louisiana. Dawson had two sacks last week against Baylor. And I'll tell you, he, he, now he's got five sacks on the day. Look at the crisscrossing up front. The stunting. The... Tackles and ends, crossing, disrupting lanes. That action really messed up Texas's offensive line in terms of picking it up and keeping those rush lanes protected for Vince Young. So now it's going to be third and long. Third, just about 20. Out of the gun. Young has time. Deep on an isolation. Knocked away. Touchdown anyway. Slow Thomas. Wow. What a grab and concentration. Touchdown passes for Vince Young. Bo Scaife made one miss at the eight-yard line and took it to the house. And then Sloan Thomas. Are you serious? 
Take a bow. 6'2", 200 pounds on the back line of the goal line. Tipped it to himself. What body control. Now Mangum for the point after. Longhorns are up by eight. Well, Sloan Thomas, former Houston High School Player of the Year, he is a senior. You think he's going to forget this night? Oh, look, look at him adjust to the football, tip it to himself, and then have the presence of mind to get both feet, not just one, both feet in bounds. And you know what? You got to give Vince Young credit. He says, Sloan, you're a heck of an athlete. I'm going to put it up there and, and, and let you make a play. And he did. Sloan Thomas out jumps him, bodies him up, secures the ball. Big time play. Vince Young making it look easy, like it's soft toss. Seven on seven <laughs> passing drills. He's six of six, 100 yards. And by the way, you could not score if you're a member of the Longhorns unless you're a senior. Bo Scape, senior from Denver, who missed all the last season with an knee injury. He scored. Now, Sloan Thomas, former Houston High School Player of the Year. He's the senior. He scores. That's it. You got to stop the one if you're an underclassman. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Although a redshirt freshman is throwing the ball to him, and is he special? Yeah, they've all oh. said, wait a minute, I think I have another year of eligibility. I like Young. <laughs> oh, man. Beats Johnny Mack. And it's going to be Mack taking it, staying right there. So our Kia Sarah shot of the day. It's early tonight. Kia Sarah L3 V widescreen digital camera. What a shot for Sloan Thomas, one he will never, ever forget. Okay, I I'm Jamal Jackson, number 18 in the white. I'm 5'10", 184. I got great coverage. Sloan Thomas, 6'2", 200. The size and the jumping ability outdid me. And I, Jamal Jackson had good coverage. You have to give credit to the guy that threw it and the guy that caught it. They executed a phenomenal play. So now an eight-point lead. It was a touchdown to start the game. 14 unanswered for Texas after the six early. On a touchdown run by Henderson for Tech, but the extra point was blocked by Tubbs. And on the end around. Will it work again for Welker? Slow it down, but still good yardage. He steps out of bounds right at the 24. Let's head downstairs. Noxie. All right, Joel, you know you talk about how it's been raining off and on. Well, it's starting to sprinkle a little bit, but who does that favor most? Right here, the Texas Tech ball boy, keeping it in a nicely warm bag, not to mention a plastic garbage bag for B.J. Simmons. Now, guys, we were talking about this earlier, especially Dave Lapham. Dave, you were talking about with it light raining, you think Texas Tech will definitely not benefit from that. A heavy rain, they benefit the most? Yeah, I, I think so, Noxie. A light rain makes that ball a little more slick than if it's soaking wet. A soaking wet football is easier to grab than one that's just got a little moisture on it. Second and six, Red Raiders have their own 24. It's a five-man rush coming deep down Whoa. the middle. What a grab over the shoulder. Carlos Francis first down, and did he grab it? No. no. Could not hang on. He, had, he looked over his left shoulder first, came over the opposite shoulder. Francis with over 1,000 yards coming into football game this evening. Averaging over 102 yards a game. Boy, that's that's a catchable ball for Carlos Francis. He's made that catch many, many times, but he could not come up with the football that time. P.J. Simmons can't throw it any better than that. Vasher had something to do with it at the tail end of the play once he bobbled it. Yep, Vasher stripped. He, he, he got the nice little rip in there. So now third and six. Vasher backing off at the line uh, with that Simmons adjusting. Although, now they go right back up, and it's going to be press coverage. Simmons out of the gun, and it's back up in the air and complete. Horns get the job done again. It wasn't Crowder again, the big guy, or on the outside, the pressure from Griffin. Yeah, and Roderick Wright came on a twist inside. The defensive tackles Tubb and Wright twisting inside. And let's take a look at if these if these defensive tackles. Watch the crossing action going on inside here, and, and, and see see what takes place. See the crisscrossing. Then he gets the big hand up and deflects that football. Crowder. That's uh that's a deal where. The pressure inside, and then the defensive ends come off the edge. Vasher, can he explode once again? He's done it already. Already, and they almost get to Reyes, who sends out a beauty. Fair catch called for by Vasher, and he's got it right at the 30-yard line. So the Longhorns hold Texas Tech to three and out with a punt for the first time tonight on the third offensive series for the Red Raiders. 
And now with a 14-point lead, Vince Young, who's not missed yet, hasn't made a mistake yet. He's completed every pass. He's made the right reads. Also, the right adjustments. Don't forget, out of a timeout, Dave, he audibleized. He checked out of a play that the coaches gave him. He yep. went to a sweep on the outside for Cedric Benson that almost went for a score. Went down to the 14-yard line. That's uh, the growth. We're watching the growth and maturation and development of a young quarterback. First game ever with two touchdown passes, and he's got uh, 13 minutes and 42 seconds to go in the second quarter. Benson altering his field for a short gain of three out of the 30. All right, Mike. Well, I'd say Chuck has lost his voice during that game, but it always sounds like that with Chuck. <laughs> You're right about He's that. He's so great. I love talking to him. The Sopranos. Chuck still works that bench press heavy, too. He's got about a 50-inch chest on him. You're right. Now, moving the pocket by design, too easy. Boy, what a cushion out there for the wide receivers. It's taken in. By Tony Jeffrey, his first grab of the night. He can't score, though. Don't forget, he's only a junior. <laughs> yeah, he's going to be the kingpin coming back. All these senior receivers are uh, going to be graduating. Tony Jeffrey is going to be the next guy to step in and fill a big role. And, boy, just that moving pocket. Vince Young out of pocket scares you to death. Because if he tucks it and run, he's capable of a big play. If he throws the football, he's showing he's capable. He still hasn't missed, right? He's still 100% completion. He's 7 for 7. That's not bad. Take that to the green belt in Vegas. And two of them are touchdowns. That dog will hunt, too. 108 yards. Incompletions. What a beginning. Young calling his own number. Nothing available up the middle, but still, not a negative play. He gets two on first down. It's almost like Brad Smith. You don't want to take the ball out of their hands because they're capable any time of busting it. No no doubt. And, you know, Texas Tech, they're going to spy Vince Young from time to time with safeties, but it doesn't matter if you spy him if you can't get him on the ground. You know, spy, spying the guy is one thing, but tackling him, getting him on the ground is, is another. And a lot of times, all it does is remove a guy that would be involved in coverage to cover the quarterback running the football, that's an advantage. Vince Young makes you make adjustments that benefit his offense. Brad Robin come into the game for the first time. Their pass catching specialist out of the backfield as they roll the pocket again. Young in trouble. Uh -oh. Not much though, is he? To the 45, to the 50, and close to a first down. So just when you think you've got him in the backfield, uh-oh, he is gone. And let's see where they spot it. He's right at the marker. This is what gives defensive coordinators gray hair or no hair as they pull it out by the roots. A guy that can do this. You got everything covered. You know, the D-line's doing a nice job on the, on the moving pocket, and he says, well, I'm going to just make a play. I'm going to create. And even though you've got it well defended, you're getting off blocks, you look up, the guy picks up nine yards on you. That is just the definition of a remarkable athlete in the trigger position. So now it's going to be third, less than a yard, third and inches, and Young's got it. You know, we talked about it last year, yeah, week, and we'll get back into it in just a moment. The similarities for Vince Young and a couple of other quarterbacks we've seen before. First downstairs, we go Jim Knox. I tell you what, Joel and Dave, you're talking about some blocking going down here, particularly the Longhorns wide receiver, B.J. Johnson, threw a great block to the play before last to free Vincent Young. Now, B.J. says he doesn't care if he blocks all day as long as they're winning. Guys, last week against Oklahoma State, Greg Davis proud of his wide receivers. They said they had 20 knockdown blocks. That is a huge key for this Longhorns running offense. Yeah. Now, Doxon, that's like Nebraska. Nebraska's wide receivers used to have knockdowns like that. First and ten. They've got size out of the position. Bulging through Benson spins for four. They do not have a wide receiver, the Texas Longhorns, under 6-1. That's B.J. Johnson, 6-1. Jeffrey, 6-1. Thomas, 6-2. Roy Williams, well, he's your prototype. He's 6'4", 210, 215. You know, we talked a little bit last week about Vince Young and size. The more I watch him, he's got the size of a Randall Cunningham. A phenomenal quarterback out of UNLV for the Philadelphia Eagles, but he almost seems like he's a little thinker than Randall at the same stage. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Joel. I, I think he's going to get – I can see him being 240, 245 pounds by the time, you know, he, he's in his 20s. He's got freakish footwork, though, freakish. Now, option. Get it on the edge. Benson's got it. Blocking downfield. And the man blocking downfield for him, Sloan Thomas, the wide receiver, and a flag at the end of the play on a late hit. And Roy Williams got a block at the other level, Joel. The wide receivers continuing to do the job. And, and boy, again, Vincent Young is such a weapon because now you, you throw the option and Texas running the option. First foul on the defense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. And there's the tack on with the, uh, with the, the personal foul, the late hit. But look at Roy Williams making the block. And then well out of bounds, about two or three yards out of bounds. That's just, that's just a free shot. That's, that gets detected. Watch Roy lock up here. Get your hands inside. 
Pretty good. Here he is. Roy's working it, working it. Finish, finish. Stay with it. Sustain. Not bad. Not that you know. This has made him a more complete receiver. Everybody knew he could run. Everybody knew he could catch. Nobody was sure about his blocking this year. He's shown that he will willingly block. He is, his gonna his value is climbing. Well, he's top ten. There's oh. no doubt he's top ten. Now First receiver take. Yeah, top five even. Benson slams his way up the middle. Lower your shoulder again, big guy. He's got it to the five for a gain of eight. And I'll tell you, I, I loved what I saw from the offensive line. Jonathan Scott, Tillman Holloway at the end of the play, high-fiving each other. The, the big boys up front got it started. And Benson, woo, talk about finishing a run. Watch the big boys here. Look at that. Look at that double team there. Look at this sustaining a block. Here comes the fullback with his lead. That's picture perfect. And now, boy, lower the shoulder pads and get about six yards after contact. Ooh, that's finishing. Benson in the eye behind Will Allen. Benson up for middle. He's in. Touchdown, Texas. Uh-oh. Oh, it's back on the flag, though. He's only a junior. Longhorns in the end zone again. Longhorns back to that smash mouth, just like they did in the second half against Oklahoma State. They're just coming off the football now. That was back-to-back -back isos. Fullback Matthews leading. Offensive line coming off the ball and knocking people backwards. And Benson saying, thanks to all of you, it was easy. So Benson with 10 carries, 76 yards on the ground. Easy night to get lathered up. It's a warm one, a muggy one down in Austin, Texas. But senior night and a night to celebrate a great experience for seniors at well, they've got 20 wins and only one loss on their home field during their career. Ooh, boy, that's some blocking there. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage on Fox College Sports. Salvin Young is going to set up. He'll not Benson this time. And it's first and ten in Red Raider territory. Over the middle. And fortunately for Roy Williams, it was too tall. You know, that's the first miss of the game, believe it or not, Dave, for Vince Young. Boy, it's amazing. He took nine minutes uh, in the quarter here. Look at the, look at the kill guys here for, for Texas Tech. Watch what happens to them as they release the cover. Texas, they're going to double team them. And look at, the, look at this. I mean, if you're out in the street, that's assault. And when he catches the football, <laughs> look at the space. Look at the space Nathan Vasher has. That's just an unbelievable job of double teaming the kill guys and not allowing them to be a factor whatsoever. Great job taking away the edge. So the gunner was gunned down. Yeah, no doubt. Now young. Nothing doing. He calls his own number. And it's going to be third and long for one of the few times for Texas, although they did get a touchdown toss on third and 20 at the 24. The touchdown pass to Sloan Thomas. So he finally misses one. He's thrown for two scores, one to Bo Skate, the other to Sloan Thomas. The third touchdown belongs to Cedric Benson on a five-yard run. Van Tex is perfect on third down so far. They're four of four. How about pass efficiency for Young today? I mean, you talk about perfect. Seven for seven, 108 yards, two touchdowns. Before that incompletion, you can't be any more perfect. Now the blitz out of the secondary. It's picked up underneath. It's going to be short of the first down of the completion. It's taken in by Sloan Thomas. He's about a, yeah, you got to go for it. Yard short, senior night from the 26. Dusty Mangum only tried seven field goals all year anyway. Remember when we asked him last week, why haven't you tried field goals? He said, we really haven't had chances. We got confidence in Magnum, but Mangum, but we just have had great field position and opportunities to go for it. Yeah, both of these teams, Texas Tech is six for nine. Too good six for nine in field goals. Magnum five for seven. 11 for 16 as a combined two football teams. Ten games into the season is remarkable. Tight formation. Allen in front of Young. Slide the tight end. And it's going to be Selvin Young putting it on the ground. But Texas moves. Yes, dead ball. False start. Coming up against the offense. Now they might think about bringing Mangum out there. I think it was Bo Scape at the top of the line of scrimmage. False start on the offense. Movement in the interior line. Five yards. Fourth down. Take, take a look right here. Actually, it's it's Brock Edwards coming off the coming off nice block, but came off the ball too soon. Came off the football a half a beat early. Now it's fourth and six, much different fourth ball. Move. Six from the 31. Still going for it though. Yes, they are. They don't, you know, you don't want to punt. Obviously, this this would be 
a field goal a, a, attempt of about 47, 48 yards. I guess they feel they have a better opportunity to convert here and eat up more clock against this explosive Texas Tech offense. Yeah, they've got the tight end in the backfield. Along with the tailback on fourth and six, slide the pocket over to the wide side. Let's see what they do. Vince Young with time. And now the drop at the 20. And what a catch. A first down, Bo Scape on the catch. Coming across the middle, the tight end once again. I'll tell you, the key to the play, Joel, unbelievable block by Selvin Young picking up the blitz. Watch Selvin Young right there. That is big time. You take him to the ground. You don't mess around. You just cut him right to the turf. He took Cavill, Cavilli, right to the turf. And, and now Bo Scaife says, thank you. I got an opportunity. I'm matched up in a favorable matchup. And how nonchalant is the throwing motion right now of Vince Young? Is he in his backyard and he's eight, nine years old? You know what it is? Confidence is narcotic. Unbelievable. He's intoxicated right now. <laughs> he's high on life. He's confident. Is it going to be Jason White? Is it going to be? Uh, I, I'm not objective because I thought Eli or Peyton Manning should have had it a few years ago. Well, Will it be Eli Manning? I, I think it's a two-man race. I think maybe long shot Phillip Rivers. They went in overtime today. They're the upperclassmen. If Eli Manning could pull off a victory against LSU and, and they get into the, uh, the SEC championship game and somehow pull that off, that's going to be big in his favor. But Jason White, unless Oklahoma loses, how do you not go for the guy? And who do you think it's going to be? Log on to FoxSports.com and let us know. We'll update you later on how you felt about it. Larry Fitzgerald's only a sophomore. That's going to hurt him. He'll be around to collect another one. It's hard for Let wide me, receivers hey, that don't return punts and kickoffs to win if it. If Larry Fitzgerald was in the Midwest, do you think he'd begin in that kind of pub? That's He's on point. the East Coast. That's good point. Now, on first down, Vince Young maneuvering nicely again. He's got about five down to the 12. Brett lost his head, just his helmet, fortunately. <laughs> but that helmet came flying off there. That's Fred Threat, the sophomore. From, yeah, well, same high school as Cedric Benson, Midland Lee right here in Texas. So now it's going to be second and less than five, second and four, clock moving. Carl Reese's defense has made some adjustments because Texas Tech has not been a factor over the last two and a half possessions. And now, will it be a certifiable blow on the first half? Every time we say that, though, fourth quarter, Simmons gets it going again. Benson diving. Won't be at the first down marker. About a yard, maybe a half yard short at the eight. Tell you, that's a very nice job by Vincent Meeks, the safety. They loaded the box, put the extra man in the box, and that was a, a, a safety who's not the biggest guy in the world for sure. And he just sacrificed his body, six feet, 187 pounds. And he was smart. He went for Benson's toenails and hit him low instead of high. You don't want to take the big fella up around the shoulder pads. You get knocked backwards. And now a timeout has been called. Last one was by Tech. This one's by Texas. So Tech with one timeout left. Texas has two timeouts left. We've got 6.31 remaining in the first half. We were just talking about what it's going to be like with Vince Young around here. Yeah, Roy Williams gave us his perspective on the redshirt freshman quarterback. Well, Vince, he, he's, he's not the, the leader of the offense. Um, he's the quarterback of the offense. Um, he developed into a pocket passer in which now he's throwing stuff on time. Usually when I run around, I look back, I'm looking at him, and he's looking at me, and he still hasn't thrown the ball yet. But against Oklahoma State, I turn back, and the ball's already in the air, already in the air, and that reminded me a little bit of Chris. And uh, so that, that's showing signs of improvement, and uh, hopefully he can keep, keep improving. Yeah, well, he's every snap and every start, it's been better for Vince Young. This is his fifth career start. Dave, he's 9 of 10, 132 yards with a couple of touchdown tosses. I, I thought he threw the ball very, very well against Oklahoma State, and, and he's carried it over. I mean, tonight he's even throwing it at a more efficient rate. And, and like we've already said a couple of times, the way he runs the football, if he continues to develop as a passer, oh, my goodness. They slide the tight end in motion. Thomas and now Benson on third in the yard. He's got the first down, I believe, inside the eight down to the seven. See where they spot it, though. Thought he took it inside the seven. They've got it outside the seven. May need a measurement. Mac will be going again if that's the case, I believe. They're going to say they don't need a measurement. It's going to be fourth and less than a foot or two. I bet Mac goes. 
he, you know, he's, he said he doesn't want to settle for field goals. He wants touchdowns in the red zone. Well, he's got a little bit of a great seven. And his defense is playing well. So you, you look at the whole picture. You know, you scored three touchdowns in the red zone. Your defense is playing well. If this one doesn't work out. Now do you need to give the ball away? I don't think so. How about Young on the quarterback sneak? It'll be Benson. He's got the first down. He is inside the seven. They may do to bring it in for a measurement. And that is unbelievable. I thought he stretched it inside the seven. The linesman came back right at the seven yard line. They'll bring the sticks in, I believe, for this one. That's going to be very, very close. Why would they go with a quarterback sneak with a 6 5 quarterback on a deep I set? That's interesting. You got a 6 5 quarterback. He shoots the gap on his own. Yeah, that's true. If he falls forward, you know, it's a first down with that height that he's got. But boy, Benson's been uh, hammering it in there, and the offensive line's been coming off the ball. Cedric Benson now, 12 carries, 79 yards, and a touchdown. And they didn't get no, it. No, they did not. They're a couple inches shy. So Texas Tech desperately needed it. And the Longhorns fail on fourth and about a foot we must at be, the seven. We must be on a tough angle, Joe, because I agree with you. From our vantage point, it looked like he made it both times. But we're looking at it at about a, oh, I don't know, what, 40-degree angle? Yes. And we're not right down the line of scrimmage, so it's tough for us to see here. So B.J. Simmons, who's missed his last seven straight, that's what he needs tonight to overtake Ty Detmer. The all-time single-season NCAA passing mark. He started needing 448, down to 367. He needs 93 before he gets to the goal line on this drive. Middle screen. Well designed. Nehemiah Glover stumbling his way to a first down. Oh. Lost their football. Who's got it at the 20? And Texas Tech does recover. Well, I'll tell you, the guy that forced the fumble is Roderick Wright. And that, that's, that's a big defensive lineman, 6'5", 315 pounds. Very good call. If you're thinking blitz, run the screen, and that, that good blocking down the football field. Look at that. That's a 6'5", 315-pound defensive lineman hustling to the football and knocking it loose. That's an A-plus for effort there. Junior from Lamarck, Texas, recovered his own fumble. First and ten, breathing room for Simmons. Quick slow, oh, a shot. Oh, Jared felt that, didn't he? Jared Hicks, a redshirt freshman from Houston. Gosh. That was a pop by Nathan. You talk about perfect timing. Arrival of football and arrival of Vasher simultaneous. And this is uh, what you face when you want to play receiver and you want to slam. Wham. Does the wide receiver go back to the quarterback and say, don't do that to me again? Yeah, exactly. Oh, and he goes back and says, you're paying for my dental bill because all my feelings are loose. Now second and ten. It's a 15-point lead for the Longhorns. Can they get a first down for the first time over the last three series? Yes, they will. Pass the 30 to the 35. Wes Walker's always dangerous. It's yards after catch for this guy. He's got it across the 40. Joel, he's got all the intangibles. He's only 5'9", but it's not the size of the dog of the fight. It's the size of the fight in the dog. And he is one fight dog now. He, he, he's a competitor. Capital C on that chest. He's also got eight punt returns for touchdowns. That is an all-time NCAA record. Although I understand Antonio Perkins almost got an eight today. He almost took it in. He was dropped at the five-yard line in the Oklahoma Baylor game. Right and now, false start. Yeah. Right side of the offensive line bailing out of there, Joel. You know, in protection... Dead ball, ball start on the offense. Five yards, first down. In, in the shotgun, Texas Tech's offensive line protection techniques interesting. They they back up and bail out almost like they're protecting a punt. I mean, they just give it ground immediately at the line of scrimmage. They take those big splits and they try to widen the defensive ends. So even if there's nobody blocking, they don't think the ends can get there because they, they move them out toward the sideline. And inside, they just kind of bail out and back up. Well, out of the 30 snaps for Texas Tech tonight, 21 have been passes, nine carries, and nine rushes for a healthy 53 yards. Uh -oh. It's going to be Henderson with flags into the air, and Henderson right up the gut, left the football on the ground, and Texas has it. Derek Johnson. Derek Johnson across the 45, but what's the flag about? It's Crowder offside again. It's a moot point. Crowder jumped into the neutral zone. When, it, when a player went in motion, it affected him, and he jumped. Got in the neutral zone. 
the freshman defensive end. Defense offside. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. And it, it's basically, he can't be watched. Watch the motion man start to affect him. Oh, here he comes. Oh, you can't do that. You, you can't watch motion man. You can't listen to the quarterback. You move when the ball moves. And so now, it would have been the eighth takeaway of the season for DJ. He has uh, four interceptions, three fumble recoveries. That one's wiped out. The young guy just not uh, holding his water in there. I like the way you put that. From the 41. <laughs> First down all over again, but 10, not 15 this time after the markoff. And a dart. Nehemiah Glover. He looked like Ronaldo Nehemiah once he caught that one. Not Nehemiah Glover down to the 37. You're right about that. You talk about acceleration. He gets from zero to 60. I mean, he's shifting gears. He's through those gears quickly. You know, I can't relate, Joe. I'm a golf cart. I got one speed. I get to max speed quick, but that's it. Look at the shift here. Boom, boom. Now he's in about third. Boom. Make somebody miss. I mean, that is some quickness getting up the football field now. You know, if you think you're a golf cart, the rest of us feel like you're a tractor trailer. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. 18-wheeler, baby. Run the 37. Tech started this drive after they stopped him on fourth down and about a foot back at their own seven-yard line. Tech desperate for points. Talks Henderson. Bouncing over his own man. And making the most of the run, didn't he? Almost to the 30, 31-yard line. So a gain of six, close to seven for Torian Henderson, the sophomore from Gatesville, Texas. And we had a big stop for Texas Tech, and all of a sudden, the momentum from defense has carried over to offense for the Red Raiders. They're only down by 15. Plenty of time left. They've got a timeout on the board. Right at 320 remaining in the half. It's second and four. So it looked like Texas was ready to run away and hide before they even got to the locker room at the break. Red Raiders have something to say about that. Middle screen, Henderson, oh. and lost the football. Texas has it. And the man who was in there for the Longhorns covered the ball as well, Thornton, the defensive end. And the when guy, they say no catch, the it guy, looked like it. The guy that knocked it clean was Derek Johnson. Football, therefore, it's an incomplete pass. And DJ separates him from the football. A, a Butkus finalist, Mac Brown disappointed. What a read by Johnson. And it, it's just explosive. I mean, just a tremendous play. Watch him. Watch him read this. Boom! I mean, that's. Does he have possession of the football? Yeah, it's tough to see if he had total possession on his hip because the ball was hit. Well, he's on his back. But you put your shoulder pad and helmet on the ball like Johnson did. Good things happen. Let's see. Third and a little more than three. Almost four. Simmons changing the play with two each side. Henderson stays in the backfield. Henderson gets a first down. They spread the D. Henderson's got the speed to get it done at 5'9", 180. And was it wasn't incomplete. Did he have total possession before the jolt by Johnson? Let's take a look. Johnson, here he comes. Johnson's seeing it. Johnson's coming over the top. There's the screen. Does he have it? No, juggling no. it and ball nailed. Good call by the official. He it. Never brought it in, did he? Yep, he was juggling the ball, but that's an excellent defensive read by a heck of a linebacker. Very 235-pound guy that can flat run. Red Raiders won last year at home. Believe it or not, over the last six matchups between these two teams. It's three for each. Yep. They have split the six. So Texas Tech, anything but easy for the Longhorns. There's Carlos Francis, and he's down inside the 20. Carlos Francis Jerked down inbounds at the 19. Five to Ralph they have some the speed on the perimeter. Francis is only 5'10", 200 pounds senior from Fort Worth. I thought he was going to get more than he got. Texas has got great team speed where they can run. And Mike Leach talks about Texas's team speed. He said, you know, they make they, they play the ball closer than most people we play. So we have to be a lot sharper with our reads, take care of all the details, run more precise routes, get up field more quickly, because these guys get closer to the football than anybody that they've played this season than they have Oklahoma next week. Now the Simmons on second and six. Over the middle, and it works again. Nicky Peters, touchdown, Texas Tech. What a little slant by Peters. Red Raiders right back in it with a minute 33 remaining in the half. Well, earlier, Mickey Peters ran this play, and he was matched up on Johnson, linebacker. This time, he's matched up on Griffin, defensive back. 
and still pulls away and, and makes a good move, makes somebody miss, takes it to the end zone. That's just great execution by Peters twice. That combination, Simmons and Peters, have worked the big yards that time for a touchdown. After missing the first extra point, which was blocked, Simmons he is going to go for two. Well, look at the split between the guard and tackle here. That's monstrous. Well, Texas be able to shoot that gap that Dave's talking about. Over the middle, it's complete. Nehemiah Glover, and it's a seven-point ball game. A little turn in. Well, that, that was a tough series for Cedric Griffin. He got beaten on the touchdown, and he got beaten on the two-point conversion. You know, you, you, you touchdown here, he pulls away from Griffin. Peters makes the play. And then again, Griffin gives up the inside of the slant. Two on the kick, it's going to be Selvin Young bringing it across the 20. It was kept on the ground, so they couldn't set up the return. Out to the 25. And here we go. Texas has it. Minute 27 left in the half, and two timeouts remaining for the Longhorns. Well, the movie that everybody's talking about, critics are calling Master. Exhilarating. Must see. Russell Crowe. Dominating performance. Master and Commander on the far side of the world. I know our producer likes us to call him Master and Commander on a regular yes, basis. That, that's long before this movie came out. That, that's true. The legendary <laughs> Dr. Bob Steinfeld. <laughs> and is, is B.J. Simmons a Master and Commander of this Texas Tech offense? He brought his troops back here a little bit within one score. Touchdown pass and two-point conversion. If you call Russell Crowe a throwback, every movie he makes is about 800 from 800 years ago. Completion, Roy Williams stopping on a dime. Michael's hurt on that one. To the 45, he's got a first down. And, and does Vince Young have a powerful enough throwing arm? I think so. He's now 10 of 11 and passing for 151 yards. And for Roy Williams, it's his third grab, 43. You gotta get Roy in the end zone, though. Sorry, he's a senior. Now, Young on the slant behind B.J. Johnson. He took a shot. So that stops the clock with 65 seconds. They destroyed him today. Now, Young out of the gun. Find some time. Deep over the middle. Oh. And it should have been grabbed. Johnson couldn't hang on. But a great throw on the run. How does this kid do it? Coming back the other way against the grain. Yeah, he throws across his body. You're right, Joel. He's, he's rolling to his right. Throws a, across his body, back to the middle of the field. And this is kind of, it, it's dangerous to say the least, to float the ball like that. But what touch? You know, throwing it in between defensive backs and, and feathering it in there. That's great touch. I mean, that's that's something that takes people a long time to, to be able to get a feel for. This guy is such a special athlete. He does so many things that so few people can do. It's remarkable. Texas needs the first down. You don't want to give. B.J. Simmons in Texas Tech, an opportunity with the football again. They've got a timeout left, too. Young needs 10. Can he run for it to the outside? Will he get there? Easily. Look at that guy. Slide. Jeez. Look at his head. He is. He gobbles it up. Just gobbles it up. Okay, get away. You're just a redshirt freshman. Pointing fingers over the opposition yeah. bench. Yeah. <laughs> Watch him here, though. They lose the pass rush lane integrity. Big gap there. So he's saying, okay, man coverage turns his back. He's not involved. Now he's going to outrun Acock. So you, hit, you have receivers taking the ball up the football, or taking their routes up the field. Defensive backs with their heads turned, backs turned, but Vincent Young can't rally to him to make a tackle, and he outruns Acock to safety. So they complete another third down. Five of seven on the third down tries so far for the Longhorns. We've got 47 seconds. John Bible has headed over. Fortunately, it's not Sunday or Monday, so he's not getting under a hood. So they didn't start the clock on the last play. Now, that is a serious home field advantage. That's senior night right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they don't want, they want to see these guys a little longer. They try to, you know, milk as much color, keep as much clock uh, on the scoreboard as you possibly can. And, and there is an official keeping the clock on the field as well. And uh, he alerted. The official, Mr. Bible, John Bible, that the clock never ran, so John Bible is going over to communicate and to get the clock to the proper time. Big game, bowl implication kind of game. Can they enhance their situation? 
seven and three, eight and two. Very important one for the Texas Longhorns, especially if they're going to stay involved in the BCS. Right, and here's all the affiliations the Big 12 has. And you can see the top four, and then the Tangerine Bowl, the Fort Worth Bowl, the Houston Bowl, the Mainstay Independence Bowl. Texas Tech, if they can upset Texas today, is trying to get themselves up into this echelon of bowl. Texas keeps winning, and they win out. And, uh, you know, they're trying to elevate themselves potentially to here, depending on what happens with LSU, Ohio State. That's, uh, that's, that's high cotton right there. And USC. Jim Knox, I know that you were in the middle of that problem. All right, Jill, John Bible just double-checked. They started the clock at 58. Now it's down to 47. He just wanted to double-check to make sure the time is correct. It is 47 seconds left to go until halftime. So Noxie was the distraction. Lad. He was. That was the key. You know what, Noxie, oh, got him offside. Movement up front. Ben Young trying to buy time, and now throws it towards his intended receiver, Sloan Thomas. Now that's way beyond his years. Otherwise, he takes a big loss. Right. Now that could have been grounding. It looked like they jumped to the interior of the line. I think they got Havili. I think Havili jumped into the neutral zone at right defensive end. Defense is offside. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. So there's a break. Texas will take it. A mark off for five. Repeat first down. 41 seconds, that's plenty of time, especially when you've got two timeouts on the board like Texas does. And when you have explosive athletes like Texas does, I mean, that's literally with the big play potential of Roy Williams, E.J. Johnson, Sloan Thomas, Vincent Young, Cedric Benson. Woo, that's an eon. 40 seconds is a, is a long time. Jeffrey in the mix as well. Vince Young out of the gun. And on the option, short side of the field, Benson. And he's got the first down. That'll stop the clock. Let's see where they put him, though. It looked like he had it easily, but then all of a sudden the official took it about a half a yard back. Jamal Jackson, Jamal Jackson on the Jackson. It is a first down. Slow to get up, a little hitch in the get along as he works his way back to the huddle. He took a shot to that right knee a little bit. And a six on the this may be a spot where you want to use a timeout. He's down right now. Watch the shot that Duckett puts on Vince Young. Boom! Then watch the shot that, that uh, Cedric Benson takes at the end here. He gets twisted. As he's going to the turf, he gets that right knee twisted a little bit as, as the tackle is executed by Jamal Jackson. I think he's going to be okay. I think he just needs to work it off a little bit. He's got 14 carries as he departs for 85 yards. And the last score, a five-yard touchdown run for the Longhorns. So seven-point lead for Texas as we approach halftime. Ian Austin now on first down. Vince Young in trouble and on his way down. He better call a timeout. Oh. Now, he's already down. Yeah. He is already down. You better use your timeout with 13 seconds left. And that one would have been grounding if he wasn't already down because he didn't get the ball back to the line of scrimmage. You have a Texas Longhorn down at the 35-yard line. Timeout, Texas. That's our second charge timeout of the half. That's Allen. Big lineman, Will Allen, has had, he's had multiple injuries this year. Last week was a little bit of a shoulder problem. He's, as you see right here, look at the tape job. He, he's got torn ligaments in his thumb. And, uh, boy, he's got more problems than a run-over dog right now. He's got injuries everywhere. Let's head downstairs. Noxie? All right, Joel, just run, wanted to remind Big 12 football fans, don't forget, you can email us tonight. Just log on to foxsports.com, keyword ask Knox. Anything you want to know this game, surrounding the game, people in the game, anything. Just give us an email. We'll answer some emails <laughs> at that time, guys. You know, it's just like calling Mr. Wizard, calling That's Jim right. Knox. That's right. They'll give you a Knox of knowledge, you know. And the Knox of knowledge is, is helpful. Will Allen. There's Big Will right here working up front. A lot of times you get caught in piles. And he's trying to protect his quarterback. And look, his own teammate rolls up on him. And there goes the left knee a little bit. And that, that happens. It happens in practice a lot of times when you're, when you're in live contact. And hopefully that's not a, a serious knee problem in that left knee for Big Will Allen, but he definitely got rolled up on. You saw that thing buckle. 
Allen's a sophomore from Houston, and he's so important because he can also play center for this squad. Right. He's setting up a guard to start tonight's game, but he started at center as well. They call him affectionately known as Birdman, Joel. He can identify any bird by its call from like a mile away. How about that the big offensive? He's multi-talented. He just looks up in the trees, and he says, that's a speck of whatever, Joel. I'm a bird watcher. He can, he can tell you. Now it's going Birdman. to be second and long. After the sack of Young, second and 14. Young out of the gun. The dump off on the boundary. And an intelligent play to get out of bounds by Brett Robin. Saved the last time. Get some yards in case you got to go for the field goal. And right now, they don't get another yard. It's about a 45 yard field goal try for Mangum. Speaking of Birdman, how about Brett Robin out of the backfield? Third down back. He can, he can get it done. Pre med like a 3.8 student pre-med. So he dissected after he watched it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The guys that, that play a sport like this and still maintain a three, you talk about having time management figured out. Well, let's see That's if they, is kid. this a gamble? Can they get off one quick snap? And then the field goal will try. Better use the boundary, they will, Ooh. and it's low and away. So here comes the field goal trap from Dusty Mangum. And that's why they, if anything, they missed it because they rushed it. Don't forget Mike Goldberg, Kellen Winslow, coming up with an Nissan halftime report after the field goal drive by Mangum. Now this one is going to be at least a 45-yard field goal attempt. Dusty so. missed one last week. His seventh try of the year from beyond the 40. And he is 5 of 7 overall. You saw his long, Joel, 31 yards for the season. So this is uh, much, much longer, 14 yards longer than anything he's attempted or made successfully this season. Got to get elevation. You can't drive it. Can't kick it low. Watch this jumper. All right. Because he got it drawn his back. No. Yes. Believe it or not, just clear the bar. At first, didn't look like he was going to get there. It really didn't. And he drew it back. I'll tell you, he had that, uh, brought that three iron, had a nice draw on it, took Four. it between the goalposts. That's his longest dub the season for Mangum from 45 yards away. Not a bad way to go into the locker room. Instead of a one-score game, they're up by 10. Watch him hit it, and, and, and he draws it in inside that right upright and clears. Just barely. And Dusty... Had it all the way. <laughs> so a 10-point lead to the break downstairs. Noxie. All right, thank you, Joe. I'll tell you what, Mac, game of momentum. You guys were driving to go up by 22. All of a sudden, a couple of, I guess, interesting spots. Then back comes Texas Tech. Right now, you're going to half at 10, leading by 10. Well, we do. They've got a great offense. We've got a great defense. I mean, great offense. Both defenses are trying to make a play, and it's hard tonight. We had a chance to get a turnover or offsides. We didn't make the fourth in inches. We didn't respond when we came out defensively. They drived and scored. I thought that three points was critical to take momentum into the half. We get the ball to start the second half. This one's not going to be over till Sunday morning. All right, Mac, best of luck in the second half. Joel? I like that. Won't be over till Sunday morning. I don't see, like they're that. They're going to be partying on 6th <laughs> Street all night here in Austin. Halftime, Texas 24, Tech 14. Next month. Bringing it bound back is Brown across the 20, out to the 23-yard line. And it's going to be a first down there for Texas. So, Mac Brown all over. You heard him say to Jim Knox, we like the three, we like the mow into the locker room, and we get the ball to start the second half. He's way ahead of everybody else there. Lincoln, first half numbers. Uh, here's the big number, Joel. Texas Tech was 53% coming in. They're only 33% on third down tonight. Texas converting over 60% of the time. But time of possession that Texas wanted, not there. Pretty even Steven football game, as the uh, score indicates, at 24-14. So now the Longhorns back at their own 23. This is the deepest, second deepest. They've started to drive out of the edge. First down, Cedric Benson on his first carry of the second half. The way he started the game, Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Joe. Just got through talking to Texas Tech head coach Mike Leach. He said they got to keep, try to not hesitate here in the second half. He felt like they hesitate a lot in the first half. He wants to continue to keep, keep doing chances. He wants to take those chances. He also says, we got to take those chances in order to be successful. Don't hesitate and continue to play hard. All right, Noxy. And one thing Texas has to worry about, at playing Tex tempo. Well, let's face it, it's like a basketball team that wants to push it and get it in the transition and always fast break it. Well, that's Texas Tech. Right. Now Texas wants to play keyboy. Over the middle, Roy Williams. He's got another first down. Wow. 
And refusing to go down finally at the midfield strike. But they want to choose some clock. Let's face it. They want to just keep the clock moving. Long six, seven minute drives easy. Picked up some chalk there, didn't he? And the drive chart for the Longhorns to the first half. Well, look at it. Impressive. Seven play drive touchdown. Seven play drive, 80 yards touchdown. Nine play drive touchdown. That's big time. Here, though, lost the ball on downs. That big fourth down call with, with a couple of tough spots. And then they finish the half with a 46 yard uh, drive call or uh, a field goal of 46 yards uh, to give him that 10 point lead. Young on the option. They took it away on the outside, but he gets a block at the opposite side and a positive from a negative. So Young they took Perry. Benson out of the play. And now he's got about five on first down, close to the 45. And individually, four Texas in the first 30 minutes of play. Vince Young hit his first nine. It's 11 of 15. And Cedric Benson, not a bad average. No, certainly not. And, and two catches for 44 yards for B.J. Johnson. Sloan Thomas had the big touchdown catch. Roy Williams involved. I mean, their offense, uh, everybody contributed. Cedric Benson contributed mightily, and it was all triggered by Forever Young. Vince has a double over to the wide side. Benson in the backfield. And Vince Young on his own. And barely tripped up from behind. Otherwise, he's got the first down. That was a save. That was a save by Brock Strat, the middle linebacker, a true freshman from Roosevelt High School in San Antonio. Otherwise, Young's into the secondary with an easy first down. Well, it, it, he's in the shotgun, and he's running a dive option. And McGinnis, the defensive end, is in a sweat because he, he fakes the handoff on the dive to Cedric Benson, keeps the football. He's one-on-one -on -one with McGinnis. That's not fair. And, and if he doesn't trip and fall, you're right. He's, he's in the secondary for a big chunk. So now it's going to bring up third and a deuce. Five of eight on third down tries in the first half. And belt into the backfield. Breaking away again. Benson dives and gets it. Do you believe this kid? Out of Midland Lee, the junior, did it all on his own. Another athlete that is gaining confidence snap by snap. This should have been a tackle for about a four or five yard loss. And 54% of his yards after contact, look at that. Two guys have him high low, no go. Another stiff arm, three guys miss. Here what about the, the balance? Fifth. What Whoa. about the balance? He looks like he's down two yard shot. Yeah, he had himself inches off the, off the ground. Looked like Dante Hall returning a punt for the Chiefs. I don't know about you, but I'm worn out after watching that. I need, now, I need oxygen. First and 10. Benson, though, he needs the ball. He stays with the backfield. Young, pocket holds up. Deep oh. down the middle, bad read. Pick off. That's Meeks. Will he take it the distance? No. Run out of bounds by Young. So Meeks read it perfectly. The receiver went way downfield. Underthrown. This is Meeks' fourth interception of the season, and this is a big one. The ball's just severely underthrown. And Meeks, just looking at Vincent Young's eyes, Vincent Young never sees Meeks. But he never throws the ball severely, so I'm just wondering who he's throwing the football to. Certainly wasn't Meeks. He never did see him. That's a big interception in, in giving the Texas Tech Red Raiders a short football field, only 45 yards to negotiate. First turnover of the game for the Longhorns. Gives the Red Raiders first and ten. In Texas territory, that's the first time they started with it in a plus situation. Henderson on the pitch finds a little lane and makes the most of it. He's got about five on first down, and actually Johnny Mack, that's his first carry of the night. So he didn't see the secondary of the backfield at least. Well, let's take a look at, at how the ball is distributed. Wes Welker getting involved as always. Going to get the football to, to uh, Nehemiah Glover. He's a big play guy. Henderson on the ground. And then... Get it to Mickey Peters. He takes it in the end zone. So distributing the ball to all quarters of the field, involving a lot of his teammates, as always, is B.J. Simmons. Simmons, they thought it was going to be the middle oh. screen, and almost intercepted by Tubbs. Boy, did he read the quarterback or what? He did. He started to go after him, Dave, and then he was moonwalking right away. Well, former tight end, he's mad at himself because he's caught passes before. In high school, he played that tight end position, and he read this screen perfectly. He got himself involved, and oh, man, he got the muckers up and could not control the pig. And if he had another shot at it, 
Tubbs would have uh, seen golden goalposts on that one. So now from the 40, third and five after the pickoff, will they get points off a turnover? Welker on the reverse. He's short of the first down by a yard. B.J. Simmons came into the game today, meaning 448 to surpass the incredible totals of Ty Detmer, BYU. For a single season record, the most in NCAA history, and he's 293 away. If he gets it tonight, it's going to be a bad night for the seniors here in Austin, Texas. Fourth and a yard, quick count. No. I don't think he got it. No. And take it away, but will they say it's down already? But it was taken away by the Longhorns. Reed Boyd. Yes, came the out strong side backer. Senior from San Antonio's New Braunfels. And that's uh, something. I think he stopped him anyway with a mark. I do too. There is a flag over to the far side. Yeah. And it's offside. Longhorns lining up. Boy, and, and Mac, Mac can't believe it. He's beside himself. Let's take a look. Is, is, this, is he in the neutral zone? He is. In the neutral zone. And Simmons, the ball yeah, comes out right immediately. Down. And, and, and here's the ball. The ball's in, in, in the feet. Reed Boyd comes up with it. But lining up in the neutral zone on the short yardage play cost him. We're going to be joined in just a moment by an NCAA record holder. It's first and 10 after the mark off to the 31. Simmons underneath. The grab is made by Peters. He's got about five, almost six. And joining us now former All-American quarterback out of BYU and the single-season record holder, the one that's B.J. Simmons is chasing right now, Ty Detmer. And Ty, thank you for taking the time to join us. Dave Lapp, Jim Knox, and I'm Joel Myers. And obviously, a lot of people have been talking about this with you. What's the feeling like? It's stood for a long time now. <laughs> well, I've been hearing about it for six weeks. Now he's going to do it. So I'm surprised it's uh, lasted this long. I didn't even know it was still a record until uh, somebody brought it up about six weeks ago. So. Uh, I'm sure it's an exciting time for him. Oh, and he throws a touchdown toss. The score goes to Clay McGuire, the junior from Crane, Texas. A Ty Detmer right away, bringing B.J. Simmons some good luck. Man, that was a broken coverage there. McGuire left all by his lonesome. And, and Ty, your numbers were, were incredible. Let's take a look at this uh, little play action fake. Fake the reverse, fake the dive. Lose track of McGuire. Nobody has him in coverage. Broken assignment right there. Brain cramp in the secondary. Easy touchdown for Texas Tech getting them right back in this football game. So now all of a sudden after the turnover, it's points off a takeaway after the interception. Meeks set it up. And they're too good. Splits the uprights. We're going to come right back and continue our conversation with NCAA record holder Ty Detmer, former BYU Cougar. But a brand new ball game in Austin, Texas. Horns by only three. Austin, Texas, sixth street. It'll be just a little busy after the game tonight, especially if the Longhorns win. Regardless, that sidewalk will be packed. That'll be like New York on a Monday, Tuesday afternoon. And it's going to be kicked away. Two good kicks into it, and now he just bounces it a couple of times. It's going to be grabbed by Brown, and Brown with a good return. Great field position across the 35 out of the 36. We continue our conversation. It's nice of him to stick around and stay with us. And what a career at BYU from 88 to 91 day for Ty Detmer. Well, Ty Detmer could make all the throws, and he understood this offense of Lavelle Edwards completely. And as you can see, Threaded the needle many, many times. What, what what numbers you had? This was your junior year when you got this done, Ty. You won the Heisman. You won the Maxwell. You won the Davey O'Brien. 5,188 yards, 41 touchdowns. Was there a most memorable game for you? Well, we beat Miami uh, second game of the year. They were ranked number one. That was probably the most memorable game at that time. So, <laughs> uh, had a lot of fun playing. It was great offense to play in for a quarterback. And really enjoyed it, you know great days with the BYU Cougars been a tough season for the Cougars as they marked it off on a personal foul as young still dancing we'll get three after all is said and done so Ty as we get ready to wrap things up a guy that went to Southwest High School and another flag at the end of the play Southwest High School in San Antonio believe it or not here we are in Austin and he makes his offseason home here 
in Austin, Texas. Your fondest memories of your football career at BYU. Anything that really stands out? After the play ended, um, personal foul on the I, defense. You know, I've been asked that several times, and it's hard to put a finger on one thing. You know, I just, like I said, I had a, a great time. It was an exciting offense to play in. Had a lot of shootouts, and uh, just had a lot of fun playing. And that's that's my most memorable thing. And you really played for quality person because I did a number of games there and playing for Lavelle Edwards. What a life experience. Yeah, it was great. You know, he was a great guy. And, you know, you always see that grumpy face on the sideline, <laughs> but we saw a different side of him, you know, off the field and really enjoyed playing for him. Well, Ty, I'll tell you, 12 years in the league. You're in your 12th year. Incredible career. Thanks for visiting with us tonight. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're just a quality act uh, for, for college and pro football. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. All right, Ty. We'll look forward to seeing Ty Detmer down the road as NFL career continues this weekend in a matchup with the Seattle Seahawks. Be right back. Texas rolling, but they're only leading by three. B.J. Simmons with that last touchdown pass to Clay McGuire, his 46th of the year, breaking a Big 12 record set by his teammate. Cliff Kingsbury last year, 45 touchdown tosses in a single season. So the records keep falling for B.J. As there's a toss on the perimeter, look at Gets into the corner, and he's knocked out of bounds, but he's in the first down of the 17. While we're talking to Ty Detmer, penalties dropping up at 215 yarders yeah. against Texas Tech. So they've got seven now. Mark off 68 yards, but the last 30 have really killed him after they got within three. And Mike Leach called a timeout after back-to-back -back personal foul penalties. Dive, pitch. Fake the dive, pitch to the opposite side of the field to Cedric Benson. You know, team's copycat. Texas copycatted that play. And, and, and they've got the personnel to execute it. Cedric Benson already 112 yards on only 17 lugs. That's a serious yards per carry. And he is almost at the 1,000-yard mark for the third time in his young career. Yeah. That'll be three straight 1,000-yard seasons as Young has spun around after a gain of only two from the 18 down to the 16. Our MetLife trivia tonight and a good one at that. How about three Texas Hall of Famers? Three Texas Hall of Famers. Can you name those former Longhorns? Two of them are That quick. are in the NFL Hall of Fame and their third Third's tough. Great question. That is, it's a tough question. <laughs> That's a bet live trivia. It'll give you a little time to think about it, but Mike Leach once again disappointed that his team self-destructed. Personal foul in the kickoff return, personal foul in the first snap from center. An additional 30 yards given away. Three first downs given away by self-destruction. Second and eight. Benson had to alter it in the backfield, and he is busted up after a loss. In fact, Nitschman was in the backfield. Then he spun around and put down, and the one who made the play, though, Brock Stratt, the middle linebacker, the true freshman from Roosevelt High School in San Antonio. Yeah, no apprehension, no uh, unsure, based on reads by Texas Tech on that play. I mean, they came downhill and disrupted immediately. Loss of four, in fact, Dave, so now third and a dozen. Now, what do you do here? This is four down territory again for Mac. Based on that field goal that Magnum pumped through there, I guess you might have to think about it. Roy Williams in the slot as they back off at the snap. Underneath, thrown behind Roy. He could do a thing with it after the catch. There was no possibility for success after the reception. So they set up a short field goal from Magnum. It'll be about a 34-yard attempt. Well, in the first half, Texas was 3 for 4 in red zone scores. The only time they did was going for it on that fourth and short, and then Texas Tech responds, goes the length of the field to score. Now they have to settle for a red zone, first red zone opportunity of the second half. They're settling for an apparent field goal opportunity. No touchdown again. That was the key. They didn't want to settle for field goals. They want a red zone touchdown. So it'll be a 34-yard attempt for Mangum. He hit a 45-yarder on the final play of the half. Tough angle. Can he convert? Put the horns up by six. Yes. yes, just inside the upright. And better distance that time for Mangum on the 34-yarder. So a time out of the field, 8.39 left in the third quarter. Simmons has been a four-quarter kind of guy this year. Don't forget, now the Red Raiders are still only down by six. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage on Fox College Sports. A big assist for left tackle Jonathan Scott, the sophomore from Carter <laughs> High School. 
in Dallas. His second season as a starter as McGee booms another away, and Texas Tech is going to start. But what about the Campbell on fourth and two? At your own 39 and lose three to set it up at the 36. Yeah, and it cost your team eight points. The, the touchdown by Benson. Yeah, Bank of America higher standards. Anything you throw up there, Roy Williams is going to be able to get on our two-point conversion. Absolutely. Jamar, Jabari Smith in coverage. But once it's in the vicinity, look at the hands, the size of the hands on Roy Williams. I mean, that is a monster mucker there. He can control that football. He makes a one-handed catch. Look routine. What a hand he has. So now 35-21 Texas. They've extended it to 14. How big is this series for Simmons? Late recovery is running back Johnny Mack. And on the catch, the junior from Lakeland, Florida. Well, uh, Joel, two decisions by head coaches. Mack Brown goes fourth and short in scoring area, which you can understand. Texas Tech response takes for a touchdown. Mike Leach in his own side of the field. His own 39. Right. Decides to and you're only down it. by six. Right. Decides to roll That's the dice. Interesting. And it came up uh, snake eyes that they killed him. And it's right after your defense took the ball away for you, too. Right. So now Simmons out of the gun. After the gain of five and Mack. Floats it underneath again. And Mickey Peters is going to take a shot. It's going to be a face mask at the end of the play. Good call by the Red Raiders staff, though. They helped the officials, didn't they? They sure did. Just a little. They wanted to make sure that one wasn't missed. That'll be a 15-yard variety, I'm sure, as well. There's three flags. Everybody saw that. There was handkerchiefs everywhere. Face mask on the defense. Five-yard penalty nope, added to the end of the five. line. That'll give him a first down, though. Jim Knox, what's the latest? I'll tell you what, Will Allen, the big right guard for the Texas Longhorns, has been on the stationary bike right behind the bench. Right now he's got up, he's getting up, he's walking towards the camera. As you see, Will Allen could be back into this game, but so far he's set out the entire second half. We'll see what happens. To look at that guy, that's the definition of a load. I'll tell you, Will Allen is one heck of a football player. He's definitely got a little hitch in his get along as well, though. Beyond the 32, first down and going deep downfield, out of the reach of uh, Hicks. His redshirt freshman wide receiver from Houston. Man, looking back on the drive to the first half of the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. A couple of three and outs in the middle there, but came one. back. Ooh. 12 yards, 90, uh, 12 plays, 93 yards. Have to punt, punt, a couple of consecutives, punt again, and then another one. 92 yards, 93 yards. That is taking bad field position and scoring touchdowns out of it. That is tough to do, but this big play explosive offense can get it done. Simmons has three over the near side, the wide side. Looks back to the short side. Pocket did a great job. His line did a great job. His first scramble. He's down to the 40-yard line. He was smart. Derek Johnson was in the neighborhood, and that was real intelligent to go down. And you can see that left knee is definitely bothering him. You know, he, he definitely had a limp in his gait as he was trying to run, and I don't think you're going to see him doing that much anymore. Because you get a change direction, you have to plant and cut, and it definitely bothered him. So they put it down, not to the 40, but the 38, and it's going to bring up third and five. Texo Farley, two of eight. The third down tries. Joe Blitz on the outside. Simmons gets rid of it early. Grab right at the first down marker. Stretching it out. Mickey Peters knew where he had to go. Has he have enough? Yes, he does by a yard. Well, let's take a look at it. Here, here's, here's Simmons. You're playing safety. You're look, it's coming right in your living room. Roderick Wright almost batted it down. Could not quite get there. Linebacker Aaron Harris was in the vicinity, but Mickey Peters ran a nice little smash route off of him. So first down with the ball at the 44 of Texas Tech. Fourteen point lead for the Longhorns, the number six team of the nation. Texas Tech tried to recover after failing on a fourth down and going over the head of Welker. They matched up with Griffin on the outside. So to bring up second and long, Joel Myers, Dave Lapham, Jim Knox in Austin, Texas tonight. Good to be in the state capital. A muggy, warm night in the Lone Star State. 3.31 to play in the third quarter. And Texas Tech, I mean, Texas 
more than they ever expected. It looked like at the outset, 21 to 6, Texas was going to run away and hide at the break. But Texas needed a field goal to get up by 10 at the break. And this is what B.J. Simmons needs, 240 yards to surpass the totals of Ty Detman for BYU Cougar for a new NCAA single-season passing mark. He came in needing 448. Now he needs 10 for a first down to the shovel pitch. Good move. Haven't seen that. Johnny Mack sprinting close to the first down. I think he may be short by about a half a yard. Uh, again, that Texas Tech offensive line, huge splits. And once you, you take those splits and spread them out, huge cavities. Look, look, at the, look at the space between those offensive linemen. And that's just a massive hole just by alignment. The splits those guys are taking are, are monstrous. Look, look at this split. Are you kidding me? Between the right guard and right tackle, that is huge. Back again. There's right the big split you were talking about. Barely pulled down from behind by Philip Geiger. As it's going to be more than enough for the first down. All the way to the 38. So they gambled. They lost. Failing on fourth down and two. At their own 39-yard line. They're going to be talking about that one if Texas Tech does not come back. Trailing by 14. The gamble when you're only down 27 to 21. Will they be able to recover? Because it was an eight-point turnaround. Texas then with the short field of the 36. Easily moved into the score. Middle of the field again. And should have been intercepted by Derek Johnson. Ball thrown behind Mickey Peters. And Derek Johnson knows it, Joel. Nobody's more disappointed than him right now. He was looking at his fifth interception, which would have set a school record. He's tied with Tommy Novus right now as a linebacker with four interceptions. That's the linebacker record. Number five was staring him right in the face. And he could not quite secure it. Talking about Tommy Novus, another guy that grew up just 90 minutes away. San Antonio native. Great Atlanta Falcon. Played against him. He was the Norman Rockwell portrait of a linebacker, believe me. Good call. He still looks fit. Yeah. So now it is going to be second and ten from the 38. Blitz off the edge. Can they get Simmons? Got rid of it in time, and he's got a wall on the outside. Matt goes inside the 25, all the way to the 20-yard line, and he's got a first down. Boy, the timing of the release on that play. You're right, Joel. They ran the screen, and they caught Texas in a blitz. Boyd Reed injured coming off the field, kind of hanging that left arm. And he, watch, he just, he slides away from the blitz, and he feels it coming, and he buys himself time by sliding to his right, he gets popped, but then, look at the real estate, my goodness, I mean, there's just nobody there to make a play, Texas coming with the blitz, Simmons kind of just moving away from it, buying himself enough time to get the football to Johnny Mack, great play. So now first down, this drive started back at the Tech 20-yard line, they've got it at the Longhorns 20, trailing by 14. Walker, the motion man as usual. Big split. Mack into the secondary. First and goal inside the nine. You talked about the splits, the gaps. And a little guy like Mack, he's only 5'7", 180. He can get lost. I'll tell you, it's, it's amazing to me that these guards and centers can hold up. It, you know, getting off a block. Sustain the block. Jarek Johnson can't get off the block. Mack's already gone. He's already gone. Can't get off the block fast enough. Is Thornton. I mean... You'd think you'd be able to take advantage and, and, and stunt a little bit in those gaps, but if you do, you can get caught stunning the wrong way. Numbers almost identical, 337 yards of total offense, Whoa. and there's movement. Man, Slot that, man. That was uh, that, that was definitely Denmark early. Start on the offense, five yards, first down. Well, that's Whitley actually, the right tackle, who was out there on that big gap, that split you were talking about, the sophomore. Texas City, Texas. Yeah, E.J. Whitley. He's coming off. He's coming off the line of scrimmage. He's going to get a nice drive block, but you're about 18 counts early there, big fella. But you know they didn't announce him in on a tackle eligible no, play, did no, they? No, no, they did. <laughs> they sure did. I don't think Mike likes it, just from the look on his face. So now, five of the 11, last 11 snaps have been in the hands of Johnny Mack and had been for Ann Henderson. Mack didn't touch the ball in the first half out of the backfield. From the 14, goal line situation all day for B.J. Simmons. And he's going to throw it away. That's a wise move. Good coverage. What a play out of the secondary by the Texas Longhorns because the offensive line was phenomenal. Well, they only rushed two guys. I mean, they dropped everybody into coverage. There was no place for Simmons to throw the football. 
Linebacker stayed back for the underneath. They had five defensive backs in the end zone. So they've got it second and goal back at the 14 yard line. So something we have not seen from Texas. We've seen three man rushes. We've seen the defensive end strong. Yeah. Texas now, calling a timeout. Yes, Texas is going to stop the clock. So a defensive timeout with exactly one minute to play in the third quarter. It's a 14-point lead for the Longhorns. And now it's going to be a third and goal. We'll make it a second and goal. Long situation. 14 yards away. And you go for it on fourth and two, deep in your own territory. Uh, Mike Leach did. Yeah. And Wes Welker couldn't get out of the backfield, losing three. Toby so. Cecil got beaten by Roderick Wright. And, 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 and you know, Joel, it's not only not only the puck, but the, the scheme of the play coming across the backfield instead of coming downhill. You're going laterally. You're going east and west. And, and you're trying to get to the perimeter. But Roderick Wright said you're not going to get there. And he, and he made Wes Welker change direction. Then it was all over with because the design of that play in a short yardage scenario, if you make a guy reroute three or four yards in his own backfield, he's dead. So B.J. Simmons has thrown it 37 times so far. He's completed 20 for 226. And it's like the defensive coordinator for Texas said. You're asking your down lineman to run sprints 60 times a game, and they don't hold up real well, so you, you better have about eight of them ready to go. And it's a warm, muggy night tonight in Austin, Texas. A movie that everybody's talking about, Russell Crowe. They say it's a dominating performance. Master and commander on the far side of the world. Check it all out. And right now, is it going to be a situation where Texas can take it away. They have not taken the ball away in the sense we thought with a passing attack like this, there would be a lot of turnovers. Yeah, it, 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 and Texas Tech has an interception uh, of, of Vincent Young. E.J. Simmons, though, has shown me toughness tonight. He's gone way up in my book. On the goal line situation, second and goal. Man in the end zone. Touchdown. Right back in it, Mickey Peters with a great grab. What about the throw from B.J. Simmons? I tell you, this guy is tough. B.J. Simmons is in pain. He's limping. Every step he takes, he's limping. There's nothing wrong with that right arm, though. Look at him limp. Look at Simmons limp here. But watch him throw the football. Little fake. That is perfect. Perfect. You can't be any more accurate than that. Coverage not horrible. Throw spectacular. Swing and gate. Okay, Texas got lined up properly defensively. Line up for the conventional PAT. Too good has already been blocked once by Tubbs. That was on the first touchdown by Texas Tech. And they make it a seven point ball game. Yes. So, talk about failure on fourth and two. And eight points for Texas. It's back to a seven point deficit for the Red Raiders. <laughs> Mickey Peters with his second touchdown reception of the contest. He is a senior from Weatherford, Texas. It's been a good road team. Come from behind situations, get to some of the numbers that has been put up by Simmons. And that is picked up by the up man after it hit on the foot. It is Steve Stagall, a backup tight end, who brought it back alertly. Otherwise, disaster possibly for Texas. Our Nissan scoring drive and an 80-yard drive at that for the Red Raiders. So they make it a 35-28 ball game. So Texas has it back, and they can't relax again. They get it first and 10. Good field position, though, at their own 33-yard line. You know, with all the opportunity the Texas defense has to knock passes down and intercept the ball, they haven't gotten it done against Texas Tech's offense. Now the delay. Pull over to the left side for Cedric Benson. He closed in a hurry, though, on the deep handoff. He only gets three to the 36. Well, the three single-game passing marks in Texas Tech history accomplished by Simmons all on the road. 661 yards at Mississippi, 586 at North Carolina State, 552 at Oklahoma State. So on the season, believe it or not, this year, Simmons is averaging 527, so anything is possible in the fourth quarter. And they won two of those football games. The only loss, no, North Carolina State beat them as well. They lost two of them, 1-1. One, one. Pressure back on Benson. 
on the carry. Chopped down in a hurry. Only out of the 38, but back to that, the pressure is on Texas. They are the favorite team. They're at home at senior night. They're the number six team in the nation, and right now, they don't have a lot of rhythm offensively. They were helped out by a questionable decision by Texas Tech deep in their own territory on fourth and two. So here we go. Up next, the final 15 minutes of regulation. After three, Texas 35, Texas Tech 28. You're watching College Football Saturday on Fox Sports Next. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in our coverage on Fox College Sports. Simmons. He faked the underneath the back. Now, good ad lib to Henderson. And Henderson makes a miss for a first down. They wanted Mack on the near side. He didn't think it was going to work to begin with. You could tell. That was his primary, and then he went off him. You know, the Texas wanted to get B.J. Simmons out of pocket. You can see why. I mean, he's struggling to move, but under fire, watch him move and buy some time. Create some time and then check down. That's a hell of a play. It really is. By a guy that's struggling with a left knee injury. That's just a guy with tremendous courage. Henderson, their leading ground gainer this year. And now Welker again on that quick end around the reverse. Good yardage. That's worked all night. Every time they've tried it, it's also been a great decoy, and they get six out of it. Of course, that was the play they were trying on fourth and short, and Roderick Wright blew it up. It was that exact play. Texas got off to a fast start. Benson, another big, big night. Pioneer game summary. Penalties. Texas Tech, self-destruction boy. Nine penalties for 82 yards. Three of them personal foul variety, Joel. But that drive they held. The Longhorns to only three. After the play fake, Simmons with the pocket collapsing deep down the middle and overshoots. Well, Carlos Francis, who was wide open. You could see the ball was going to sail. B.J. Simmons has to have help from his offensive lineman to get to his feet. I'm starting to get visions of Byron Leftwich in that Marshall game where his linemen were carrying him down the field. Just over the fingertips. Gets the right hand on it. Glances off the fingertips of Francis. Not a bad throw by B.J. Simmons, but he wishes he had it back. Oh, that Leftwich story, that reminds me of a James Brown concert. <laughs> Bringing him back off stage. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Just for one more, though. Now, second and four from the 41, or make it third and four. Good field position. Can they take advantage of the interception? Underneath, they've got the first down. It's Welker again across the 45. Nice clear out down the field by the other wide receiver as he took Griffin with him. This is a well-conceived offense, and, and Mike Leach will tell you, you know, I, I took the vertical passing game from BYU. The horizontal stuff is West Coast. I got from Linda Infani when he was with the Green Bay Packers. And the screen package I got from Valdosta High School when I was at that level. So he's taken bits and pieces of, 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 of things from every level and put together a dynamic passing attack. Just, a, just enough of a combination that teams don't see it. Yeah, So exactly. they're not used to it, not ready for it. Simmons, resetting up in the formation. Yeah, it'll be Johnny Mack. Man, Johnny Mack goes into the backfield. Derek Johnson, All-American candidate and linebacker. Well, this is like a cobra uncoiling at you. Man, he just he just sprung at that play. And, and what explosion he showed. He makes the read, come downhill, boom. Very short sure tackle. Butkus, Butkus finalist, and it's obvious why. So loss of six, make it five on first down. Simmons out of the gun. Straight four-man rush in pursuit, back the other way. And what a grab. Defensive back on the back of Welker. It didn't make any difference, though, did it? He went low to receive it. A great reception. Michael Huff was there, Joel. And, and the ball was thrown where only Welker could make a play on it, not Huff. And he throws the ball, and again, has to buy some time by moving to his right. Throws the ball back across the middle late, but Huff did not break soon enough on the football. He was in the vicinity, as well as Michael Griffin. So now it's going to be third to deuce. They'll go for it on fourth down. Will they need to? No. Henderson gets it. Inside the 40, down to the 39, so 39 yards away from tying things up. Now we 
threw it out earlier on our FoxSports.com. Question, who should win the Heisman? Jason White, Larry Fitzgerald, Eli Manning. And I'm surprised Fitzgerald's that high along with Eli Manning. Jason White with incredible numbers. Eli Manning's had an unreal season, though, as a leader of that old Miss team. He sure, he sure has. He's had a phenomenal defeat. If they win the, uh, the SEC, it's 42 years since it happened. Now Simmons. On the sideline, what a grab. Incredible catch. That was Henderson out of the backfield. Mercedes. And they're going to say he's out of bounds. What a throw by Simmons, too. Boy, that was pretty. Did he get a foot down? He won't make any difference, but did he? Did he have control and one foot in bounds? Has to have total control of the football and get one down. That's a pretty ball. I mean, it's right on the money. Does he have possession? Right foot? Oh, I think that's a catch. Yeah, I thought that I think right, right, foot right foot was, foot was down. down. Right foot was down. Catches the football. Right foot down. Yes. That's a catch. I guess well, the official thought there was a little juggle there down by his leg. Did he have full possession? The official didn't give it to him. Pretty darn good play, though. Second and 10. Still outside of the 39. Deep shotgun Simmons over the middle. Great grab. Despite Huff on his back, it's Carlos Francis again. First down to the 26 of Texas. Just a quick slant. And, and Simmons is so accurate. And he throws that ball. He, he, he's a gunslinger. I mean, he just flat out cuts it loose. And his teammate, his teammates respond to that swagger. This throw is pretty. I mean, that is very, very strong because that's not bad coverage by Huff at all. Simmons on first down, screen with a dump off. Henderson making the most of it as he's countered from behind. He's got another first down, though, just outside of the 15. So Simmons now, and he's had some incredible fourth quarters this year. He's now got 25, making 26 completions in 45 attempts for right at 300, 297 yards. I'll tell you, one of the big keys to his success tonight, Joel, as always, are these guys in the interior of his offensive line. Because these tackles come wide to stretch the defensive ends. Inside, they have to hold up with those big down linemen, and they're protecting Simmons very well. From the 15, first and 10 for Simmons. Now the fade, corner of the end zone, knocked away. Nehemiah Glover, one of the flag, he won't get it. Pretty good play on the football. Uh, Aaron Ross, yep. a true freshman from Tyler, Texas. Again. The thing, he is never, Simmons is always in the area. He, I, I, I can't remember the last terrible pause I've seen him throw. He is in a phenomenal rhythm, and it's due to his offensive line. I think Texas is not getting the penetration to push up the middle. They thought they might be able to get to disrupt Simmons and get him out of rhythm. Tech goes into the fourth trailing. Simmons averages 173 yards a game in the fourth 15 minutes alone. Now he fakes a little pop. Gives it off. Henderson spins his way all the way to a first and goal. What a fake go by Simmons on a little pop of bubble to the right. And what a job by his offensive line. Watch these guys lock up. It was a stunt, and they, they stun away from it. They loop away from it. They, they stop the penetrator, and the looper takes himself out of the play. And as a result of that, Henderson has an easy lane to take advantage of. Texas Tech now has 12 more offensive snaps. At 424 yards of total offense compared to 379 for the number 16 of the nation. They try to tie it up now. So much to keep away by Texas. Welcome to the motion, man. It'll be Henderson. He's in. Touchdown, Texas Tech. Again, that complimentary play, Joel. Welker's hurt him on the reverse a few times, that quick reverse. And that keeps, makes the perimeter people from Texas. They have to play, play their responsibilities, and it widens them out. Then he just runs the dive off of that to Henderson. Great scheme, well conceived. Look, freezes him, great block, touchdown. That, that fake reverse spreads everybody out. That's just good creation of, of a complimentary play by Mike Lee. He's too good. Tries to tie it up at 35. It's blocked in here for wow. a second time tonight. Do you believe it? Frustration for B.J. Simmons in the offense after all the work they did. Brian Robinson, I think, got it. He's blocked three field goals this year, and now he's blocked an extra point. Ten block kicks on the season for Texas now. 
I think Robeson comes off the off the edge here. Look how low it is Man. to begin with. Amazing. Well, it was low. In fact, you can call it a block, but it would hit the back of his own lineman if Texas wasn't there anyway. It was that low off the foot of Too Good. Yeah, his plant foot slipped. Now the low wobbler picked up by an up man, and that's the tight end, David Thomas, and he spins to the 29. So Texas has very little momentum in the second half, and one of the big reasons their quarterback, Vince Young, is averaging only three yards a carry. Now Vince Young, like Brad Smith of Missouri, who's a sophomore quarterback for the Tigers, it's essential that he gets 60 to 80 minimum on the ground, if not closer to 100. Uh, right I, now, Young's got 14 carries for 41 yards. I agree, Joel. And I think Texas Tech said, you know what, Vince, we're not going to let you run it. You're going to have to beat us throwing the football. He did in the first half, but he hasn't in the second half. In the first half, he lit him up. Seven straight completions, two of those touchdowns. Young out of the gun. Quarterback draw. Forget oh. about it. Exactly what we talked about. On top of the situation completely. Man in there for Texas Tech right away. Wamba. Yes, Mwamba, the junior from Belgium. So all of a sudden, a very stagnant group of Longhorns. And that's not what you need. You need about a five, six minute drive right now. Mac Brown just just agonizing over the uh, the competitiveness of this football game. Two blocked extra points. Ten blocked kicks now by the Longhorns this season alone. Vince Young by design on a roll underneath. He's got a first down. His wide receiver, Sloan Thomas, takes it past the 40 to the 44. That was too easy with the cushion in the corner. And, and Sloan Thomas looks like he's limping a little bit as he comes off the football field. But he wanted to make sure of this catch. Boy, did he look it in. And he's getting some attention on the sidelines, some medical attention. And don't forget, this is a Red Raider defensive unit that's 111th in the nation out of 117 teams. Everybody has scored on them. Last couple of weeks, they've improved, but it was well, against Colorado and Baylor. Right, consider but, the competition. But it does help your confidence to shut people down below 300 yards. Now, out of the gun, Young had it deflected at the line, just trying to get it in the direction of Roy Williams. So it'll be second and 10 for the 44. More importantly, it stops the clock with eight minutes to go, as Texas Tech, don't forget, only has one timeout remaining. I think Session got his hand up and and knock that football down. A nice little pre pressure package by Texas Tech from the backside got clean. And you know, Texas Tech's in the same scenario. Hot, humid night. They're trying to roll in as many players as they possibly can, too, to, to finish this game strong. Only eight minutes to play. It's going to be survival of the finish, fittest. Who has conditioned themselves better as a team? Here we go on second and ten. Young again on his own into the secondary. And he's got a big first down to the 38. He had to start making plays, so the quarterback draw. Oh, and this was an incredible effort. Watch this play. He's got pressure. He's supposed to go to his left. He sees the pressure. He says, you know what? I can't go that way. I'm coming back to the right. In a gaping hole. Just an incredible effort, making people miss. Finishing the run. It's at the 37. It's a first down for Vince Young. So all of a sudden, he's picked up a couple of key runs. The last one, taking him to the 60 yards on the night. Now the rhythm drop wide up and over oh, shoots. Man. Thomas, or B.J. Johnson, rather. And what a breakdown in the secondary for Texas Tech, but they're not victimized on a poor throw where Young didn't have a lot of heat either. No, he sure didn't. Anybody, and he ended up throwing off his back foot and not, not stepping into the line of scrimmage and making the throw. The look of frustration. Yeah. But boy, did he make a great run the play before that, though. Recognition, seeing the blitz, and slamming on the brakes and changing direction for huge yards. So it'll be second and 10 from outside the 37. Young, 16 of 24, 213 yards passing. The delay, and Cedric Benson running into the stack. Still gets to the 35. So right now, 52-yard field goal. Let's take a look at, at what Vince Young did a couple of plays ago, Joel. There's, there's a blitz coming. Watch the blitz. And he see, oh no, here it is. So I'm going this way. I mean, they have it designed perfectly. 
They have pressure coming right in his face. Marcus Boyd unblocked, and Vincent Young says, I can't go to the left anymore. Slams on the brakes and takes it to the right. That is just a just instincts that you can't coach right there. Seven of 11 on third down tries for the Longhorns. The biggest two of the night. Can they keep the drive alive at the 35? There's six and a half to play. Pocket holds up, and he throws it behind a wide open receiver. He had once again B.J. Johnson down there. Now again, Mac Brown, do you go for it? Is four down territory here? Certainly not a field goal. You try to try to cough and corner him and play field position. And or do you give a short field? If you miss, that's the real negative. Right. A 65-yard field for Simmons. And, and normally, that's not that short. But for this offense, it's terribly short. But Mac Brown's got to go. I mean, that was that was his game plan going in. Not have to punt the football. They didn't punt the ball at all in the first half. And, and now, now it's four-down territory. Texas is going to call a timeout. So now both teams with only one timeout remaining. 6.35 left in the fourth quarter. A lot closer than anybody could have anticipated. A one-point affair, 35-34 Texas. But Texas Tech clearly has had all the momentum in the second half as they were down by 14. Should be even, but it's a fun extra point try. We'll see what Texas can do when we come back on fourth down. Third 13 coming up for the Red Raiders. We've got 327 left in regulation. Texas Tech trailing by only one. And look at this, they line up with a tight end. Simmons in trouble. Cody on a flyby. Finds the man, has the first down, and oh, it's short. It's short of the first down. Hawkins got it, though, about four yards shy. He goes inside the 30, down to the 26, has to take it inside the 22. So still gives him a chance on fourth down, unless they actually go to too good for a field goal attempt. I think I think it's four down territory, Joel. I, I, you know, based on what's happened with the place kicking. Boy, just, just out of the reach. Of that of the pressure off the edge Simmons steps up in the pocket and finds enough to keep the drive alive pretty good pressure off the edge I can't say enough about the courage this guy has shown tonight and they've taken so much time over on the sideline now Texas Tech is going to be out of timeouts as well so Texas Tech out of timeouts just like Texas nothing comes easy when these two get together last year Texas Tech won it at Lubbock 42 38 the last six games down the middle three wins for each side and Duckett right here the big defensive end is giving his offense a chance he had the sack and forced fumble the McGinnis came up with it. now back to our poll question so we told you to go over to foxsports.com who should win the Heisman we mentioned it earlier still at 46 percent that's probably the way a lot of people feel right now although Eli Manning he has come on so much over the last few weeks and as you said Dave they're lost without him yeah and I, I, I tell you with, with Jason White a lot of people say he's not even the best player on his team never mind in the country but then you, the other side of it, the sentimental side of it is two reconstructions back-to-back right. -back seasons and he comes back a senior and is leading his team for potential national championship that's pretty good effort so here we go on fourth down. B.J. Simmons has already attempted 50. He's completed 29 for 314 yards and three scores. Has not thrown a pick. Hasn't made a mistake tonight. They have not turned the ball over. Can they negotiate a little more than four yards? Almost five. Two to each side for Simmons. And now out of the gun. Shifts Henderson. Over the middle, the grab and the first down. Welker held on to the football. He's got a first down to the 19. Clutch. Oh, who else? Who else do you go to for a big play like that? Giger's in position, but he can't make the play. And Welker can. Two guys that have hearts as big as anybody. Simmons gets it to Welker. He almost timed the hit perfectly, too. Inside the 19, first and 10 Red Raiders. Do you believe it? Two minutes and 20 seconds and counting. What a game. Anderson. Wow. Bolton is one to a block on the outside. Down the sideline. Inbounds. Stepped out. 11 out of yard line. at the 10. He made. He's just outside of a first and goal situation. He made Derek Johnson miss, Joel. 
and that's hard to do. What about the block he got, too? Oh, he did. He, look at the down blocks, the seal. And now, he, right here. Right there. Derek Johnson misses, and there's the crackback right there on Basher. And there's where he steps out at the 12-yard line. That's just good effort, though, on the perimeter. Basher gets cracked. Derek Johnson, Henderson made him look silly in the open field. So Henderson stays in there with Simmons. They put it inside the 11. Need to go inside the 9 for a first and goal. Henderson, huge roll up the middle. Touchdown, Texas Tech. Untouched. Do you believe it? Incredible. Incredible. Now you, you might as well go for two here. Once again, this Texas Tech offensive line takes humongous splits. Look at the splits. Are you kidding me? That's a hole automatically. And just run the little uh, little underneath draw, and he's barely touched again. And, and Texas Tech's offensive line is just spreading the front seven of the Longhorns out. And they keep getting wider. They're so confident their ability to block one-on-one, -on -one, they're widening them even more. Look at the splits here on this two-point conversion. Incredible splits. Simmons out of the gun again. Will he have time? Buys it over the middle into the ground. It'll stay a five-point lead for the Red Raiders, but the number six team of the nation in deep trouble. Out of timeouts, we'll see what Texas does. It is going to be brought back by Brown. Matt Brown wanted to make it back to the 20. He's got it out to the 15-yard line, and that is it. Great coverage downfield for the Red Raiders. And a look back at the touchdown, but the stop was made by Jeremy Woods. Watch the play. It's a full block. Center block back. Center Toby Cecil block back. Guard pull around. I mean, there's nobody to even have to block because of the splits. Had them all widened out, ran a little full block. Center chokes back. Guard pulls around. And now Texas has to go a long way. 86 yards. Bill Gold doesn't do him any good, and they're out of timeouts. And Chance Mock has taken over. What a time to bring Chance in. He has not played the entire game. Now Mock scrambling. Man on the sideline. That's interesting because the man was out of bounds and yeah. came back inbounds with a flag on the play. Right. And so then, Texas starts with her worst field position to start to drive the entire game and starts out with a mistake. Yeah, the penalty flag and the hat thrown. The hat thrown to show. The offensive receiver went out of bounds, came back in, and was the first to touch the ball. That was Brett Robinson. illegal touching on the offense. Penalty has lost it down at the previous spot. Just so, like an incompletion, basically. Second down. So this is going to be an interesting one. A lot of people are going to wonder about bringing in a quarterback who hasn't played all night. Well, what they were thinking about doing with, with Chance Mock now, the way Vince Young had been playing, was third series of the game. That didn't happen. Two-minute drill, one-minute drill. It's the two-minute drill, no timeouts. 14 touchdowns, two interceptions on the season for Chance Mock. But, boy, this is tough. And that was early in the season. Some of the non-conference competition. Mock has all day, and he's got Roy Williams wide oh, open behind oh. the secondary. First down inside the 35. Ball is already down. It came free. It'll be first and 10. If he hits him early, it's a touchdown. How do you let Roy Williams get behind you in this situation? How do you let it happen? And the secondary from Texas Tech all arguing with each other about it. But this is incredible. You know you're going to go to him, and they let him run right by. That's, that's amazing. You've got to get deeper. You can't let him run by you. And, and they were all arguing as they were working their way back to their huddle. Now Mock with Robin underneath. And he's not going to bounce after the grab of the game. Maybe a yard at the 31. So to bring up second and nine with 93 seconds left. And Roy Williams asked out. Got turned and spun around a little bit at the end of the play. Yeah, he's, I think he's cramping up. Looks like he's cramping a little bit the way he's walking. I think he needs to hydrate. You know, on a night like tonight, I, I think he's got some cramping problems. Look, look, look at his face. Yeah, he's cramping up. He's starting to, to tighten up like rigor mortis starts to set in. Every every muscle starts cramping on him. Bad time for that. As he's out of the game, their best receiver. Jeffrey going over to the same side as B.J. Johnson in the slot. Chance Mock on the delay. Cedric Benson can't get out of the backfield. And instead, it was actually Selvin Young. So now their top rusher isn't even there. Benson, they've got their backup who's seldom used. 
and in plenty of time there's still over a minute to go but it's third and long it's third and long these two down you're gonna you're gonna have the clock stops in college football with the first down now mock on third and eight so he's got it in the Throw it underneath, and it's a completion for a first down. Taken in by Tony Jeffrey. He had Selvin Young wide open as Jeffrey gets it down to the 20. So didn't know if he wanted to swing it out. They'll stop it to move the chains with 64 seconds left. Again, Roy Williams still not in the football game. That Sloan Thomas, that B.J. Johnson, no Roy Williams. Out of the gun. It's only a three-man rush, and Mike is going to run it. He'll take it to the sideline. He gets a block downfield and first and goal. Here's wide receiver. Brad Robin, in fact, is running back gave him a great block in the flag. Yes, he did. He worked his way back and, and, and got a block and finished it. How about the respect you have to have for Chance Mock to do what he's doing here? Mr. Cool, Calm, and Collected. And watch this block down the football field Joel talked about right there. That's just great effort. But Chance Mock coming in in a pressure situation. This kid, you have to admire him. He never got his dauber down. He always prepared to play. And he's getting his chance to play. And Roy Williams trying to trying to line up and, and struggling with those cramps. He is flanked over to the left side. Benson to the backfield. Mock corner of the end zone. Oh! And what a grab. Touchdown. Wow. B.J. Johnson. How about Chance Mock? Woo! Man. That is amazing. It really is. They'll go for two, up by one, with 46 seconds left. It was an 86-yard drive. Chance Mock with a big pass to Roy Williams on their first third down they converted. You know, Chance is saying right now, you give me a chance, I won't mock the position. You that's an unbelievable drive by a, a quarterback that's a total team player. I'll tell you that right now. You gotta feel good for this kid. Well, we saw last week what kind of kid he is. And his father's got so much to be proud of. His father, Mike, a linebacker at Tech, and then played with the Jets. And Chance Mock was the first one when Vince Young last week made a yep. couple of plays at Oklahoma State. Chance Mock was all over him like a great teammate. And, and this throw is is fantastic. I mean, he comes in ice cold. Now it's, you know, 100,000 degrees and humid. Not so, a bad catch. But that, yeah, he makes a great adjustment to the football over the shoulder. And Chance Mock right now could set an Olympic record in the high jump. He's so pumped up. Better vertical than his dad, I bet. <laughs> now, the two point try to go up by three. Still, you got to worry about Simmons, even though he's out of timeouts. Mock, fade, corner of the end zone, and overshoots. Sloan Thomas flag. Yeah. Yes. They got Jabari Smith grabbing Sloan Thomas. Trying to run the fade, and Jabari grabbed on. What a football game. And, hey, there's 46 seconds left for yeah. Simmons. Oh, yeah. Are you, are you kidding me? And they only need, they, if they get two here, Simmons with a field goal these, sends it to overtime. These two points are critical. Defensive pass interference. Foul occurred in the end zone. Therefore, the ball will be placed at the two-yard line. And, and right here at the top of the screen, there's the grab. Trying to get the fade in. And, and left hand all the way. Sloan Thomas can't even get his right arm up in the air. Jabari Smith has a, had a, has a total grab on it. This, this is a monstrous, monstrous two-point conversion. They get half the distance to the goal after the penalty, so it's at about the one-and-a-half-yard line. And do you think about running it now? In the deep set, it's Cedric Benson. Will Allen's back there, You know, I, as I, well as the tight end, David Thomas. If, if Vince Young were in the game, Joel, I think you'd think about running it. Chance can run it. Well, what if, if Vince Young's there, you think about a naked boot play. Yeah, exactly. And, and I, think, I think you might do that with Chance Mock. He's got good enough feet where you give him a two-way go, get him out on the perimeter, and give him a run-pass option. And I, I, th I think that might be a, a decent call. And I'm trying to see if Roy Williams is on the field for this two-point conversion. He's been cramping like crazy. Not a bad I start to the night, though, those numbers for Chance Mock. Oh, my goodness. Four now for he's five for 74 on the score. 15 touchdowns, two interceptions. Huge to go up by three. And moving on the line, it's a free snap for Chance Mock. Into the back of the end zone and over and too tall for his tight end. And chance of signaling offsides on Texas Tech. That's going to be half the distance to the goal again. So it'll go to about the three quarter yard line. Tried to get it to Brock Edwards. Defense offside, half the distance to the goal. Replay. Yeah, it'll the be down to the one. Now you've got to consider the running game because you're at the one yard line. And that, that's that's an obvious infraction. And uh, 
Chance Mark does a good job of just maintaining. But they were gonna it, they were gonna roll him, Joel, and give him a two-way go, get him out of pocket like we were talking about, let him either tuck it and run or, or throw it. Chance signals it. Offside. Texas Tech. Half the distance to goal, first and goal. Here you go. 4-2. Knocks it. Quarterback sneak. What else can he do? They haven't officially signaled yet. Yes. He gets two. Well, Texas just, up by three. Just cozies up behind the big lineman. Big offensive line blows off the line of scrimmage. And Texas takes a field goal edge. But as we just mentioned, far from over. Oh, absolutely. So I guess they left too much time on the clock. 46 seconds left. What a game. I, I, you have to feel so good for Chance Mott, a total team player. And what did he do in this drive? How about this deep ball to Roy Williams? Are you serious? Roy Williams makes the catch, then he starts cramping up and he has to exit the game. And Chance Mott says, I'm going to scramble and, and I'm going to have Robin make a great block for me on the perimeter. And then this throw to B.J. Johnson and the adjustment to the football. Great throw, even better catch. And Chance Mock can't believe it. He's beside himself, and rightfully so. So B.J. Johnson, another senior on seniors night. Here, yep. Comes through with a great grab over the shoulder. He's a senior from Houston. And actually Grand Prairie, Texas. I don't mention all Big 12 last year. Well, Mac Brown took a chance. And Chance Mock said, I'm not going to mock the position. And I'll tell you what, he took him on a drive that was just as good as it gets. But I still, uh, there was a critical mistake by Texas Tech. How Marcus Boyd let Roy Williams run by him in basically a prevent defense. You can't let you can't let that happen, and, and it happened. Texas Tech, big big mistake in the secondary. Meeks over to the far side. Johnny back to the near side. McGee needs to kick it out of the end zone. Give him a long field. Instead, it's a duck hook, and on a hop at the 11. They designed a return left, and Meeks takes it across the 20, belts it across the 25, out to the 26. So about three to four first downs away from a long field goal try with 38 seconds left. See, I thought, I think that ball was overkicked. You know how you overswing golf and you duck hook? He overkicked that. He overswung with his leg and, and hooked that kickoff. Because I, he's consistently put it in the end zone yeah. tonight. He, he got so pumped up, he mishit it. You know, he, he like overswung at the, at the football, just like you overswing at a golf ball. Roy Williams with eight grabs tonight. 136 yards. Doesn't have a touchdown, but he's made the big catches. Simmons with two to each side. Can he get him in field goal range? And it's deflected. Tried to get the middle screen out, and it looked like Thornton tipped the football. And our Dr. Pepper player of the game for the Texas Longhorns, is there any doubt? He uh, put a towel on him. It almost looks like Kellen Twinslow in that game against Miami with the Chargers, the way he's hobbling here. Look at that. He's got a nice pack <laughs> on the back. Uh, you know, uh, maybe it's not just cramping. Maybe he got hit in the back, and he's got a bruised lower back. He's icing it up. Nobody has left. Another shutout here. Better than 80,000 on hand. Pretty amazing. Austin, Texas. Simmons on second and 10. Throws it into the ground. 30 seconds left. The third and 10 from his own 26. Well, that ball came out of his hand funny. And it didn't exactly have a lot of conviction stepping into it. And Mike Leach. This is agonizing, agonizing. I mean, his football team play. They, they were plus three in the turnover department. They did everything they needed to do on the road against the number six ranked team and number five BCS team. And he finds himself still three points down with less than a half minute to play and no timeouts. Third and ten for the 26 for Simmons. He's got a pocket holding up, wow. and he's got his wide receiver for a first down. Wow. What a grab by Francis, spinning around. <laughs> Carlos Francis Amazing. takes it across the 45 to the 49. 19 seconds left. Only one more pass sets him up for a field goal. Another 15 to 20 yarders. Spike it first, though, to stop it. They will. And P.J. Simmons is going to answer. There's no quitting him, I'll tell you that much. This kid has, look at him drag that left leg. He's got that knee brace, just dragging it. He can't even walk, never mind run. And he's played every single snap and just thrown the football so well. He's 31 to 54 after the last completion for 345 yards. He hasn't made a mistake. No interceptions, three touchdown tosses. And two goods thinking, yeah, give me that chance. But boy, up front, 
give me some protection. But too good, he slipped in that plant foot on the last extra point that was blocked. As long as too good hit from 47 this year, 17 seconds to play. Now, down the middle, wow. what a grab. Nehemiah wow. Clever, another first down. They're already in field goal territory at the 31. Unrealism. 11 seconds to go. They got to spike it again. And then have one more snap before a field goal try, unless they go for the end zone on the next snap. I would. I, you got to go for the end zone and, and make sure you get it into the end zone. If you don't have it, throw it away. It'll be a spike. That'll stop it with nine seconds left. That's the quickest two seconds I've ever seen. So nine seconds remaining officially. Let's take a look at, at Too Good with the extra point problems. Here's the first extra point. Blocked. Tubbs got his big hand up and blocked it. This one, he slips with his plant foot, but off the edge, Basher comes and gets a hand on it. It was a low kick, as you describe anyway, Joel, if Basher doesn't block it. But the protection's got to be better, and he's got to get better traje trajectory, too good does, on his kicks. He's got to get it airborne quicker and better protection up front. No timeouts left. Underneath. Catch now. In and out of the hands of the intended target. He wanted Nehemiah Glover again, so it's all up to Keith Too Good, a redshirt freshman from Dallas. Six of nine on the season. He is not trying to field goal tonight. His longest of his young career, 47 yards. Will it give B.J. Simmons and his teammates an opportunity to go to overtime? What, what a night. I, I got to salute B.J. Simmons. I got to salute Chance Bach. I got to salute Roy Williams. I'm saluting everybody. Heck of a game. Coming in, he had not had one block this year for the time. With five seconds to play. He's got plenty of no, distance. Hooked it, hooked and he it. hooked it. No. What a break for Texas. They escape. The number six team of the nation prevails by three. And look at this sportsmanship right here. Mac Brown, his team consoling him. Mac Brown consoling him. But nobody feels worse than too good. For Dave Lapp, Jim Knox, I'm Joel Myers. Thank you for joining us in Austin. Our final again, Texas 43, Texas Tech 40. What a night, though, where a young man who had done so well, Keith Tugood, had two extra points blocked. Well, the first really was penetration up the middle. Second, you said it, he slipped. This was a hook. He got into it well. But it was wide left off his foot. I think again, Joel, adrenaline overswing. Overswing at the football and, and hook it. Just like sometimes you overswing and hook a golf ball. Same mechanics for the kicker and two good real. Said I was, I'm trying to stay calm, but I overswung and I can't believe it. And he's just absolutely crushed. I mean, that, that's tough. Tough way for a great game to end. Chance mock. Without a doubt, the man of the hour with Jim Knox. All right, here he is, Joel. Chance, Mock, take us through that final drive. 86-yard drive, and that won the game. You got the two-point conversion. You know, you get the ball to guys like Roy, BJ, and they just make plays for you, man. That's all I know. How difficult was it for you coming off the bench ice cold? It was so. Uh, I just knew we had to do it. That's all there is to it. Say enough for this defensive unit. They came through at the very end. Well, we needed them, too. They came through. They say defense wins championships, and you saw that today. Congratulations on the great performance, Joel. All right, Nancy. So because of Chance Mock, Texas still alive and well to the BCS. Still alive and well. Look at that hat. Boy, that, he must be using that hat for a spit cup. That baby's dirty, isn't it? Yeah, he's superstitious. I know <laughs> my boys are the same one. Those hats last a long time, and they've been good to you. Roy Williams, though, player of the game. Eight catches, 136 yards. And we remind you, first and ten provided by PVI Virtual Media Services, LLC. Once again, for Dave Lappin, Jim Knox, I'm Joel Myers. It's always a good one when we come to Austin. That was the case again tonight. Horns barely survived. 43-40 over the Red Raiders. So long, everybody.